to the point. Okay, we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. It's Thursday, December 5th, 2019. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, did you file any more minutes and reports? No. You guys got anything new on your agendas? No. Or your uh, or meetings? Okay. Any commission comments? Okay. Bids and con... No, that's bids and contracts. Okay. Unfinished business. Nope. Okay, new business. 2020 ambulance purchasing. This won't take long, guy. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. The, uh, as you guys have previously indicated, um, look at getting uh, three ambulances for next year um, in the proposed budget. Right now, uh, we have a fourth ambulance that's going to roll uh, 200,000 uh, miles uh, by the end of this year. So we need to start the procurement process in getting those ambulances. Uh, right now, you're looking at about six months, five to six months uh, from the time of order before they would be ready. Um, and then it takes approximately four to six weeks to actually get them ready, stocked, all the radios, et cetera, put in. Um, so what we've done is we've like, uh, we brought forward, we'd like to uh, request permission to move forward, um, knowing that we'll be encumbering this year uh, for a couple weeks uh, until next year's budget uh, to purchase three of the Demir's ambulances. Uh, each ambulance will be $192,370. Our crews currently are um, working out of the four demirs that we have. They, uh, they seem to be uh, pretty satisfied with those. Uh, they've been doing well. We've had uh, minimal maintenance cost on anything. Anything that we have had has been taken care of extremely uh, quickly. The current fleet that we have that are not demirs has been costing us. Uh, if you look at our budget this year, we've overrun on maintenance cost on them. Uh, for engine related things, stuff like that. And so uh, we're kind of hemorrhaging money on the maintenance of the older fleet. So the sooner we can get uh, units purchased and into the fleet, we believe that that'll lower our maintenance cost uh, to the county. So uh, if you have any questions. I don't have any questions. I'm, I'm good with moving forward. Well, I, I would still like to put them out to bid. I mean, I know it, it, it takes more time, but, but um, I would like for Osage Ambulance to have an opportunity to bid on these. I know, you know we've talked about this, but, you know, if you give them the requirements of what we need and they say, well, we can't do it or this is how much it is, We've still given them an opportunity to bid. And uh, when I went to Lynn and talked to them, I, you know, I. The last thing that we had a discussion with them is, is they're almost a year out from the time of purchase yeah. before that you can get delivery. I, they couldn't meet a lot of the uh, requirements that we had the last I believe round. it was five that they were unable to meet um, when we initially uh, went out for quotes and provided the list of what we were looking for. I believe there were five items that they were unable to do. Wasn't one of those the locks on the doors? No, sir, they were able to do that. Okay. Well, we went through it extensively when we bid it the first time and we looked at different ambulances I'm pretty much committed to working with Demir's, and if we get them ordered now, it helps us actually to save us money because next year there'd be an increase in the price. This year, we can get these ordered. Basically, we don't pay for them until next year anyway, but that, we can get them ordered and get them.
coming. So less time we wait, we'll get them coming. We've got a lot of ambulances already getting high in mileage. So it's, you want the best and safest vehicles coming to save you. One of the things we have been able to do between the cost difference from last year um, for those four ambulances was roughly $68,000 in savings to the taxpayers um, that we were able to do. We've been able to take that money and use it to get life-saving equipment um, that better helps us provide care to the citizens. So we believe that any opportunity that we have to be able to reduce uh, the cost and take that money and use it elsewhere uh, to improve the, the, our life-saving capabilities is an opportunity we need to continue to do. I'm good. Do we need to vote on it or just okay it? I believe you need to vote on it, sir. Okay. You have to send a transfer as well. <coughs> transfers? We don't need transfers. Let's add them to the so Are you buying ones. two or three? Well, we had bought the two after the tornado using next year's money, right? Correct. We had done that um, and gotten some of the money back from the insurance company, and I believe FEMA is uh, currently. The last thing we heard was is they'll do a one-time uh, replacement cost um, since we didn't have a replacement on uh, on the insurance. As long as knowing in the future that if we don't change that insurance policy, that they won't do that again. I believe it's minus the. Uh, what we got from the insurance um, and the deductible. Uh, we haven't gotten an okay on that yet. No. Correct. There's no okay on that, but that's the last okay. thing we had heard from them. Um, so, do we have the money? <laughs> what do you mean? You're going to have to move from contingency. The money would be in the budget next year. I mean, it's just spending it early getting the things ordered so that we have them next year otherwise it'd be 2021 before we'd have any <clears throat> so but we did the two earlier using <laughs> next year's money too i i'm just uh, and the price in here is based on three because they gave a, a value discount on that if you go with two then We'll have to change that up. I believe it goes, uh, the price difference would be about $4,000. About how much? About $4,000. I move that we approve the purchase of three Demir's ambulance. Second. Do a roll call. Sam? No. Jeff? Yes. Chris? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. 2020 budget hearing, 8.30. Donnie Schulte. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Lynn. <laughs> yeah. Need to get that taken care of. Yeah, that's that's the plan. He has a couple of fresh coffees. Some things have changed. I some things. Since I turned us in, I need to add to that. Prices have gone down. Prices have gone down. I wish. I got one for each of you. I think I two different things. Yeah, one for the younger. You'll get the other coffees that I had made up for the job description. You'll get those. Is that what you emailed? I gave five copies, four copies of Debbie. Those copies? Here, I think. I gave them. You should have copies. Yes. No, we I should. All the same thing, all one another. And they're on the file. Uh, they're just one of those files. Should have one. Should have one to send. Oh, these are all different. Oh, these are all different? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, what are those for me? These first will be played by you all. And they're all different. Oh, so. Okay. You did an email. No, I, I had some kind of email from you, but that wasn't it. Okay. That was the one I think was already got. I wrote with five copies of Debbie's been up in the You can go on the drive for uh, 
commissioner's budget 2020. Are they unanimous? And department's request. Yeah. Okay. Christian, that email. I would assume it hasn't changed. You guys need me to send it? Um, you just pull it up. Again. What page are we on for Donnie here? No. What page are we, Kristen? Uh, I mean, 67. You go F drive, then commissioner's budget. Uh -huh. Commission. Commission. Commissioner's budget. 2020. Yep. Yeah, I remember Which seeing that. Some says yep. department's request. Right. That's budget requested. Budget for bailiff and pre trial service. Yes. Is that what it's at? I'm asking for about six thousand five thousand one hundred and ninety seven dollars pay increase for the margin, but court margin itself. The biggest increase is for the pre release guys because when Christy talked to me, all the marshals salary was raised. You all set it at forty five thousand. Well they were hired in forty thousand and they are actual different marshals that they do keep hiring the rest. And I do use them in court from time to time to keep using my part time people. I pull them up and get them to work as they work in the course with us also. Also raise Richard's salary from $50,000 to $60,000. He's supervising more employees. We've got 135 people out. Well, I, I think um, this year has been fruits of the of the tree for all of us. Uh, in 2013, when you all gave us the opportunity to create this program, we had no clue what the Supreme Court was gonna do this year uh, with the uh, uh, forcing the uh, review of bonding and, and the things that's going on with that with the Supreme Court and the courts. The beautiful thing was for this county, we had all of that in place. Initially, we started doing what the Supreme Court ordered in July. We started it in April. Um, our judges were able, because we had already been practicing some of the principles that they had requested. Um, so the transition for us into this new Supreme Court ruling was simple. It was easy for us. Other counties are struggling, they're still struggling. And so I think that that journey you all took with us in 2013 and, and creating this program has paid dividends unforeseen in 2019. The other thing I think that has been a blessing for the county is, is the ability to, for the county to sell prison beds to the feds. And I think if you look at an account over in the Sheriff's Department, there's probably an excess of $9 million, which some of that money correlates to the bill bed dates that the county sold to the federal system. I'm just saying that I believe that, that we can do better in what we're doing right now, pre-trial in the court systems. And I think that the thing that uh, I would like for you all to consider is using some of that same money that is in those accounts to help us further what we're trying to do to limit cost and provide better service to the county and to the citizens. One of the big things I think that has come out the last two years is this committee, this criminal justice committee that was kind of dwarfed out of the pretrial committee that was put together by Judge Joyce. And I know that uh, Chris has been involved with us and kind of taken these steps with us as we went along. And I see a lot of growth in this group. One of the big things that's coming out of this group is we're trying to partner with uh, an organization that provides services to people that are at risk in the community. And they bring in and provide service and money for the county to help them provide services for people that have mental health, drug addiction, housing, all those type of issues that lead to crime. And a lot of the criminogenic things that, have, that I think we have addressed with this program has helped reduce 
<clears throat> a lot of or some of the crime that's occurring in Cole County. And I think that the next step that we're looking at in this group of addressing is domestic violence and also mental health. And those two areas, I think, are leading contributors to jail cost. Judge, I think if you talk with uh, Sheriff Wheeler, he'll tell you that one of his major issues is mental health over there in that jail facility. And trying to get those people into different facilities more at the state level where they can get the services they need. Setting in a jail cell doesn't solve their problem. It doesn't address their mental health issues. We're just stockpiling those people at a significant cost to the county. And I think we need to get that cost out into the state to where the real resources are. I think John had said that he was receiving money for mental health. And now with our new facility they're building in Fulton, they're, they're not putting in a an area for for us to house those. So I don't, you know, mental health is, uh, yeah, I don't know what to do. Well, mental well, health is so much more than just services that they get inside the jail. It's, yeah, it's services that people get outside in the community. It's, and then so many other things as we see in our pretrial program and, you know, um, <clears throat> so, uh, there's uh, all these groups that are there, and we had uh, Bill Dent the other day um, talking a little bit about, you know, something else there. And um, but it's these these groups outside that help people before they get into all this trouble, or they they keep them out of the jail, or they help them to re rehabilitate so that they don't commit another crime, and they can stay employed. And um, so, I mean. That's really what we're talking about. So how are those groups paid? Uh, a lot of them are privately funded. Um, there's grant funding that they um, get uh, that, uh, you know, and, and we're working with uh, the state, too, and uh, probation and parole. Um, so, you know, they, they have the same issues that we have, but you can't just keep locking people up because state prisons are downsizing. The county jails are all full, as we found out over at the Capitol one day. They're they're full beyond capacity, <clears throat> and so they have no idea what to do with all these people. And uh, most of them house all their own prisoners, and their budgets are ridiculous. And they're and they're going broke fast. Well, hospitals, local hospitals, can't take care of them either. So it's we we have been. We have basically gotten two guardianships. We, we've kind of found a, a system now where we can help people get guardianships with the hospital. Uh, we're kind of partnering with them in their mental health to get the necessary information that's needed to do the guardianships to get these people out of jails and into a, a secured uh, housing area. Uh, we just got a man that basically came in here he was here for three weeks uh, and he had been traveling and homeless for years um, and within about a i would say probably 70 or 80 days we got him a guardianship and we got him in a residential facility in sedalia the charges were dismissed against him uh, because we now had him in a secure environment where he could could do what he needed to do and be taken care of, and the man couldn't have stood trial. We, this is the type of guy you would have in jail for months because there's no one out there for him, but because of the program and getting him the services, we're able to get this individual out. So what I'm asking basically, guys, is, is to another part-time position. Uh, most of this on the back page has already been accomplished. Randy has been moved up to a full-time position. We did not increase Butch's salary. Mary Ann did receive an increase in her salary and she is working the hours. What I'm asking for is a new administrative assistant and that individual, um, I think we have a target on that individual. He's the, he's, the individual is someone that can work not only with us, he can work with the marshals, uh, and he can also work with the state court or with the administrator, uh, Julie's job, 
that Jesse had called the Gunny Wolf Stab. Oh, yeah. He'd come in. I can also be a two, we have a murder trial starting every month, starting next month. Two murder trials next year, capital murder trials. On both those trials, Julie cannot do anything with the jury because she's related to the victim. So we're going to have to have somebody else come in and do all the jury stuff. I can get him to do that because he's still working for Richard. If we, if we could share the time. And that's the reason why I said we well, should the salary money from a minimal, like 11 or 12 is not enough to have what you pay now. And right now, uh, last week we had 140 on the program, just to kind of keep you abreast. When we started last year, we were starting to, we were getting into the hundreds. Now we're up to 140, and basically we're doing it with the same staff. So uh, these guys, I can't, I can't tell you how much uh, they do. They don't take lunches. They work every third weekend they're on call and they take up to 50 phone calls a day those job descriptions are written up if you wrote those up you would understand that's the type of people you know what you're going into that's what we do we're all on our downside i'd like to keep these guys another year and maybe into the year after that start training the new people to take over what we're asking you think you know we're numbered in our year Oh, Jesse's, Jesse's good. You know, so yeah. I'm just asking for a little help. I'd like to keep them all for another year and maybe a little longer if we can. So do you say the salaries have already been increased? You've got those they, parts, so basically they have right not. now. They have, they have not. The two, right, the two deputy marks we have, they're not deputy marks. I put in civilian employees and they're not the same part as the rest. They're deputy marshal positions. So they're currently both at 40000 not 45000 Okay, but the I hate using names, but Randy's position is has been already moved part time to full time. Correct. You okay, so that part's done that in July. It just would have raised up the beginning salary of the deputy marshal. Are they, are they on our insurance and retirement? No. no. Okay. Yes, yeah, for that. So, so my biggest concern with their department is we've added almost three hundred thousand dollars in expenses the last few years for the program but there's no revenue coming into general fund to offset it so we keep adding costs but we don't have a way to help offset that cost so general funds picking up that additional amount yeah and I think that the generated money from the uh, from the federal beds uh, I think is is a direct response to what you all started uh, with this program. I think it gave you a reach, a, a, uh, a source of income that you would not have. And I think it relates to the, you know, to this program and what we've done. And those bids would not be available without this program. What did you all do with the Was corrections, they're giving us so much a day, aren't they? For uh, the way the billing no. goes for that is well, I mean they're no, they they only pay. So someone can sit in that jail for two years, and if they never get convicted and never serve one day at J Triple C, we get zero. Exactly. Yeah, I know. So I mean, so they're they're way behind in that, and so that's why all counties or anybody that has a jail is all mad about the uh, reimbursements well the state don't have the money i mean you can say whatever you want but the reimbursements in my opinion will never be there they're going to limp along there's no way they're ever going to get caught up and, <clears throat> and so the reason that we started this program is because <clears throat> when we get people out of jail it costs us five or six dollars a day to monitor them well right now we got a hundred and forty people out of the jail every day that's over two million dollars that it would cost us to house those people whether we housed them or we put them elsewhere which we did 
when I would not be the program today, you'd be housed at sixty crewmen house yeah. someplace. Yeah, we we would hire, we would have them in Greene County, we'd have yeah, them where, yeah, we, we'd, we'd have them wherever, and we did that, and so you know it's a, There's our checkbook. it's not to, uh, <laughs> it's not to say. I thought though that Matt last year I thought they were saying they were going to pay so much a day for the ones out on. Uh, they would want <coughs> to, and, but I, I can tell you right now. Uh, Mr. Bushman, there that money's not there. It's never going to be okay. there. Okay. Um, this this latest thing where they spent five million dollars to for some monitoring equipment, in my opinion, is ludicrous because they don't have anything in place to to run it. And that's what these counties are running into. They don't have a program to release people to, and so some of them are running them out of their jails. Some of them are are running them through the clerk's office, you know, having a clerk handle it. And so there's, it's, I mean, I think what, what we provided to you and, and is a, a, a systematic look at how to release somebody and releasing the right people. And I, I think if you would ask the sheriff that most of the people in his jail right now are dangerous people, uh, that most of the people that, that can be supervised in the community, uh, we have and are supervising out in the community. And uh, it's a constant effort. And, and I can tell you that the, uh, the, the law enforcement community, in my view, is working together better now than it was when we started this seven years ago. I, I think there's, uh, I'm talking to the police all the time. They're giving me information on my people. They're calling me about information. If we get information, we're sharing with them. I mean, I think there's a lot of, of, of brotherhood back in the law enforcement community that honestly I thought was lacking when I first came back here. Uh, but that was just an outsider's view, and Donnie's been around it longer than I have here locally. I mean, so when I came on the commission, um, you know, the, the sheriff's budget was in the red every year and the projections were in the red. And so, yeah, we started this with a minimal amount of money and yeah, it's grown, <clears throat> but the sheriff's budget's in the black and the black big time. And so, you know, he's got the resources that he needs. So all these things do have to work hand in hand and we got the judges on board. We got all the people on board meeting together working together and so you know you can't just look at at the dollars um, you know obviously we got to figure out how to fund these things but at the same time <clears throat> we kick out the 40 or 50 federal prisoners that we got and we lose that revenue and we stick all these people back in the jail <clears throat> and so and and more um, so if you got 50 federal and you stick 50 of these people back, you still have, you know, another 90 to house elsewhere. And what's that going to cost you? I mean, it'd be, it'd be three and a half million dollars in a, I mean, that's, that's what it cost you. You lose all your federal revenue, plus you'd have to house all these people. And so. <laughs> if you stop and look at it, we're asking basically for a part-time person and we increase We've almost tripled into our inmate servers. And all we're asking for, we did we did the shift in July where we put Randy on full time. Uh, so basically all I'm asking to do is replace that administrative assistant. I'm not gonna have anybody to do the accounting portion of it that we did before. I'm basically gonna be doing that. Uh, I have to have people that are there that are doing reports and then court in order to keep things moving. Randy, Richard, and Bush, they do know they'll make a report to make a contact. Yes, if we do a motion to court, do you? We're going to come into court, take notes, and come back and tell us what's going on. Are we going to have a ceiling where so this is the max we can handle on pretrial release? Not done that yet. I'm, I'm not looking at a ceiling. What I'm looking at is if people are doing well in the program, transferring them out of the program. You know, as opposed to keeping them till the end. 
the biggest issue we have in pretrial is there's no public defenders to move the cases. And as long as we have that issue, that's driving up the amount of time that I'm supervising those folks, which drives up failure rates because the longer you supervise them in this capacity, the more likely they are to fail. So consequently, what I'm battling is making sure that if, if I have somebody that's doing well, that's progressing well, right now we basically have more call in as opposed to coming in and seeing us every day. That's the way we're managing it now. But it may be a situation where we actually take them off the program that they're doing well and doing what they're supposed to do. We had 97 cases yesterday. Six to ten of those are still waiting on public defenders. They've been approved, but there's a six month wait before they get in court. In Henry County, it's two years. And we have another guy from drug court trying to get in. He got past drug court now, and he's got a case in St. Charles, and he said they've got a year back on before he gets in trouble. I mean, I think, I think the biggest point of our group. And I, and I say I, ours just because I attend, but uh, is that we're looking for solutions. Right. We're looking for other options to be able to keep people from being incarcerated or whatever. And so, you know, I mean, if the public defender things that, you know, we have the public defender there, Justin's at our meetings and stuff too. So, you know, we just got to find solutions. We can't just keep bitching about the same problems over and over. We got to figure out a way to fix it speed the process up, get them through the system, you know, get them out of our jail or get them over to JCCC and wherever they need to go. And that, uh, I mean, I don't like to just complain about stuff. I like to find a way to fix it. And so. And I can tell you right now, the prison population, I, get, I talked with Vince Ross yesterday, it's 26,000. That's 6,000 less than it was two years ago. So how many case thousand. managers do y'all have? I'm sorry? How many case managers do y'all have right um, now? Well, it, w case managers we have none. I, I think that was a title that may have been given to Randy and Butch and myself. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, all of us are doing the same thing. I'm just looking at the grid that we went off last year. We got court martial one, two, case managers one, two. So I'm trying to get where we're at with that. I so, thought we were all hired on as marshals. That's the badge we carried. That's our that was our understanding. Well, I thought the ones handling the pretrial release were going to be case managers. Or, that was uh, the title we assigned them last year. Okay. We broke them out and made them their own okay. grouping. There's not one of us available. Sometimes when they have a dirty year and they have to arrest them, all of us are in court or doing something. They have to do that. And I do use them in court from time to time. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I mean, so they, they are marshals, yeah. You made a good argument, but we don't have the budget for six marshals. We got budget for three marshals and three case managers or whatever the number is, right? So. So I'm just trying to figure out where we're at, and I see where you want to go. Is you're wanting to move them to the uh, court marshals that are at the, the 45 number. So, and if it's just like in public works, if we don't have an operator three position or operator position open, you can't just put people in positions that we don't have. So, well, I did put in advantage case management. <coughs> I was never asked about that since they were so new, we didn't really change their amounts. We changed their title to pull those pretrial people out separately from the marshals. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's they're essentially court marshals anyway, but it's a different program. program. Being, yeah, they're working a different program. It's just the same thing. They, do, they can do the same job I do tomorrow. So then they should have been hired in at that. Yes, sir. So that's what I was saying. Well, so I'm not understanding when, exactly. when, when, she, when we talked earlier, she told me that, that, that they were going to start the budget at 45,000 for the, the marshals. And I didn't well, know so it all goes back though. When we moved Butch from part time to full time, your request was 40,000. Mm -hmm. So we moved him to $40,000 salary. Yeah. 
So then when we moved Randy from part-time to full-time, we couldn't go above Butch and take him to 45 when we were still at Butch at 40. So we brought him in, in at 40 as well. Okay. And, and I think part of the Marshall was we had no title for them. <clears throat> I don't know that they had a title when they started. It was a new program. Well, I don't care if they're all court marshals and you have court marshal one, two, three, four, that's what seven. Mm -hmm. So that's, but I'm just, I'm trying to stick with somewhat of a grid here. I think what was represented to them, they were coming on as marshals. I had no clue about the pay scale. When we set Butch's salary, <coughs> That was set just based upon an amount. I had no clue as far as salary. If, if let me tell you, and this is just my view of it, to pay these guys, they ought to be making what lieutenants are over at the sheriff's department. I think they have that type of responsibility. Take a pay cut. <laughs> but I, I'm just saying, I, I these guys are quality guys. They're educated guys and they believe in the program, so they were willing to do whatever it took to make this work. Yeah, I'm not questioning yeah, the no, quality of our employees at all. I'm just looking at trying to be consistent across the board. We've got everybody coming in here and saying, got a great employee, I should be paying them more. Yeah, pretty much across the county we have that. Um, I, I don't know if you all listened to the budgets the last three days, but it's been the theme is that I would rather take care of the people we have right now than hire more people. And is the program going to fail if we don't have this new administrative assistant? Uh, well, no, I mean, it's not going to fail. Because I'd like to keep working with our means there. I'm not saying no to it right now. Just, that's why I'm at with it, though, is leaning that way. And then the salary, I mean, where did, where did that number come from? Because we don't have any assistants that make the equivalent of $37,000 a year. So... It would be $18 an hour at full-time rate would be 37 a year. Be well, I know it's only part-time, but I take $18 times yeah. it. And just, um, we'll have a bunch of assistants that would be ticked off. We were talking about 20 hours a week. <clears throat> no, no, 20 29. Hours, well, 29. 29 the end. Yeah. Because the initial thought was uh, Jesse, because of his ability, could help in a lot of different areas. So if, if, Donnie needed him, you know, to do something, he could do it. If, if Julie needed him to help with something there, he could use it. I mean, he's the type of guy that can work in any portion of the courts. And so the, that's the value of having somebody like him. I mean, you can hire a secretary for $11 an hour, but that's what you got. With him, you got somebody I can send up to court and can send in court with a judge and with a laptop and say, okay, here's what's going on with this guy. We've interviewed him. You know, he's that type of guy. You don't find those guys walking around on the streets. I mean, I don't know. Well, it's probably going to be I tell you, at the time that we set that salary, I had no clue that forty-five thousand was the minimum for a deputy marshal. It wasn't. It okay, wasn't. so well, that I mean, you know, so when she called and told me forty-five, I never complained at all. That's fine with me. I had no problem. Usually, we'd come in. We when I first started, we'd come in with a court order from Kinder, and that's just what you pay, whatever you order. And now we come in, we got to talk it over. And she called and told us forty-five. I never complained. I thought it was a fine salary to start with. That. You know, my only problem was all these guys that are hired in it, it just, I'd like to bring them up to all that one salary, you know. I mean, it's obviously a great program and it's saving us money, so, I mean, you know, we just got some tough decisions to make on. I understand. Forward, so, you know, I, I the only thing I asked you it to is look great at is, I, I appreciate y'all. Is the is the money that's been generated <clears throat> and that is in that fund, and I think that that's at your discretion on how you spend it, uh, because it was your all's decision to move forward with this program, 
and I think it was a wise decision, and I think as a result of that, you have generated over $9 million, and, and that's realized gain, and, and, and I think, you know, that that money could be used to keep going in this area and keep progressing in this area because this is not going to change. This is going to continue. And I think the longer we stay at the front of it, I know a lot of places look at what we're doing here and how we're doing it in, in making plans on their programs and other, other areas. Now you should have been teaching that class last year rather than the people they had. You knew more about it. So. I appreciate that. Richard, do you want to talk about the software as yeah, well? Yeah, I, I can. Um, last year, uh, we... Um, when we started the program, Judge Beatum went over to uh, the state courts and was able to get them to help us develop a software, I'm going to say a program, it's really an access program that they created, and we have been using that access program um, for the past seven years. We have about 2,400 entries into that program and a whole bunch of information in there. There's a couple problems with the program. One of them is they never finished it. And so what initially was planned was is that as we entered data into the system that we could from that data enter develop a report that, that it would fill and we could develop a report from that system. They never got it working. So basically everything that we enter into that system, we have to come back and re-enter that same information into a report, <coughs> which is takes a considerable amount of time to re-enter everything. We're basically working off about seven spreadsheets down there on our program, which we have to continually enter the same data in over and over again which is a significant workload for us. So last April, probably we were down, the, the state program that we had crashed uh, about two to three times a week, and we had a hell of a mess all the way up to about July, and they finally got it fixed, and we, we've not had experienced as many or it's a significant of problems since July whenever they did whatever they did. So because of that, I went out and started looking at a program for us to purchase to where we could enter the data one time and that data could be shared and create reports to where it, we could manage our workload among you know doing these reports and also managing people in the system. So I went to and, and found this company that offers a, a basically a pretrial program and I got a uh, quote from them for this pretrial program. What that would do for us, it would reduce the amount of time it takes us to generate reports, which would reduce the workload on our people and would make us be more effective and efficient. It would also create statistics Right now, in order for me to create statistics for you all, I have to go into a spreadsheet and basically take the information off the spreadsheet, which is time consuming. So what this is, is, is just a program that we were looking at to see if we could manage the information and the data better and cut down on some of our workload. So Richard, which portion of this is an ongoing fee versus a one-time fee? The so. 21... 231. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, the, um, <clears throat> the top fee is the, uh, the 9,170. That is, uh, there's a continual fee of about, I think, $2,000 they've reduced that each year. Uh, plus, if we use the Amazon platform, 
there would be that $6,000 fee there that you see. Uh, if we do not use the Amazon format, it would be around $2,000 would be that annual fee for that. So if you didn't use the Amazon, you would have to purchase a server or something to house it on? Is that? I've talked with Brian. We can put it on the server downstairs. Okay, okay there's not an issue with that. He and I have talked. We've had some communications with them. So basically that if you don't use the Amazon cloud and we do it all in-house, it'll be that $2,000 renewing fee. The 21,000 is the one-time program. That's just a one-time only? Yes. Okay. Okay. That's okay. exactly what it is. So I had $2,500 in the capital for software because we weren't sure pricing until we got this. Um, they have reduced that amount. I can give you the new figures because of, uh, of them. Uh, Is he? Sure. Uh, I, I, because of some things. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> 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 I, I had to park uh, <laughs> And I think from talking with Brian, the biggest issue I've, I've got to resolve is with uh, state courts right now we use their um, software to run our program I I have to see if they will allow this on their software if they do not allow this on their software then we would have to go off of their software package and use one use account it's, it's uh, and Brian seems to think it's a doable thing uh, we would probably still maintain one computer on the state package, so if we had to go in and do things in that system, we could do that. So it seems like it would benefit the courts as well, with processing and managing the, the defendants. Yes, sir. Would they be willing to go in on it? I haven't asked them. I can certainly I mean, them. have you talked to them about this program? I just, I don't know, I just Google it all. I've talked with uh, Judge Joyce about the program, but I have not asked them if they would be willing to uh, supply any funding. Is it a total? It, I'm sorry, yeah. Jeff. Is this a total of thirty thousand? Is that what it's going to cost? Up that, front pay. That's for the initial installation. Yes. So it, I understand the importance of this program. Like I was talking to uh, Chris, and I think I was talking to Jeff too about this. It, it's a it's a very uh, symbiotic relationship that we have that we all three we need federal prisoners we need pretrial and we need and of course we need a jail um, and I'm willing to work with it a, a one-time cost I'm willing to, to supply some money for that because I think that it, it, it would benefit them greatly uh, the problem I have is the uh, uh, operational cost that takes away from my operations that's what it is we, we do have a, a good budget I am in the black $500 so um, we're doing pretty good on our on our budget, I'm going to continue to do that. One-time payments, I have funds specifically for inmates that I can spend, and, and I would be happy to, to, to spend some money on this particular project if it benefits the PTS. Can you check with the state and make sure this is? Yeah, and I, then I really haven't gone forward with it because I didn't know if, if you, you know, if it was something we could do, uh, but. I have, you know, I've been talking with Brian, uh, and I've also looked at what I have to go through with the state. I have to uh, submit a proposal to them, and then I have to go over, and they have a meeting, and, and they go over it. The likelihood of them allowing us to let this company have access to their program is probably not real high. So I'm thinking more along the lines we would probably have to go with our own server. Uh, my understanding is the actual hardware, the, the laptops that we own, are our laptops. However, the state claims them because they have their program on it. So they would take, I guess, their program off of our laptops and then we would have to install a program uh, and use the county uh, server to run basically our program on the county server. So 
you know, I, I'm I'm good with especially if check and check would see if the the courts would pay for part of it too. I would. But but it seems like it would help a lot. Of it. Yeah, what I'm looking at it. it helps them manage and go through stuff and make sure everybody's yeah. treated the same and they have some kind of system in place and then it just you know, helps Trainer make this program more sustainable yeah. and effective. Yeah. So was this off of a state contract or a uh, no. purchasing? No, I offer? think we would have to go through a, a, a bidding, I'm guessing, is probably what we would have to go through. This was just a company I found that actually had a pretrial program. It, pretrial is so new across the country, there's just not a lot out there. And a lot of these programs, they don't write them until they see there's money out there. And they want it at the state level. They want to come in and sell this to the state, you know, to provide it for all the people in the state. I've, I've been trying to get the state courts to look at something like this or for them to create something like this and get ahead of the game because I do think there's going to be a lot more pretrial programs, but I have not had much buy in from the state. So. Okay. Well, they don't have to because we're going to. That's right. That's yeah. exactly right. And you know what? Yeah. That's that's what this is all about. That's why the inmates they're coming back to the counties. They're pushing the prisoners out to us, and we're having to yeah. pay for it. The citizens of Polk County are having to pay. Yeah. For Get that down, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the compass classification is that something that you all use at the jail, John? Or, I mean, this program seems like it's got a little bit of everything. Well, we use a program, the classification program we use through is Interpol. So whenever we <coughs> come in, we, we go through all of the process. I'm sure it's similar. This is, it, it is not something that we would utilize in the UJ. Okay. Okay. But I don't know if an interface would work in there to where you could pull the data. I don't know if that's some place we could talk to Interpol about to see how much it would cost to. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, that would be something that yeah. we could also look at uh, because certainly the information you're entering why well, redundant you know, it is yeah. it's just redundant it's the same you know and that's what's killing us is you know I put a guy's name in in seven different programs you know and so and the, everything about him that goes in those programs I have to redo each time so that's one of the big things I'm trying to get away from to help manage time our time better mm -hmm. You know, on working on these cases. That's why, you know, I've been reluctant to ask for more staffing because we're trying to do things smarter and not increase staffing, but we've got to the point where we're growing so fast and the, the, the work is piling on us uh, because of the deadlines. Basically, Judge Walker gives us seven days to get a report. Well, if you go in and interview 15 people twice a week, you can imagine trying to get reports generated in seven days on, you know, twice a week to 15 feet. Why don't you two see if you can work? Yeah. Work it out. You got anything else? We're, we're 20 minutes behind the schedule. <laughs> Sorry. Well, you can do what you got to do in eight minutes, right? No, I just want you. I'll start and then you complain when it's hot in the summer man i'll tell you we can't please you do you guys have any other questions for richard before he leaves no not right now thank you thank you gentlemen i appreciate the opportunity Steve, you're up. Okay, what page is Steve uh, on? Steve is page 33. I've been scared. And can you guys make sure you everybody signed in? I'm not doing a very good job, Berlin. I'm slow to secure. Excuse me, sir. Pardon me, sir. The gun is poking me. We're ready. So I was serious about the heat. We really need to do something about it. But I don't know if there's something in the budget for it or not. But you know, we don't have a thermostat or anything in our office. And it is very cold in there. So I'm I don't know what we're gonna do. <laughs> it's this hot over here, and I can see why you guys want to turn the thermostat down here because it's really hot in here. But now it's 
you know, it's 70 degrees in our office or 69 degrees. So something has got to be done. That's right. I keep it at home. But, well, why don't you give us the thermostat back? <laughs> Just take it out of here and put it in our office. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're not in here very much. No, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so, something's really got to be done with that. So, but anyway, on the budget part of it, I guess everything looks pretty good to me, except we're kind of worried about the election expense part. It looks like there's about $60,000 $60, difference between what uh, Kristen's asking and what I'm asking. We do have five elections. They did add one to us in February. There's a water district in Taos now that's going to have an election in February. So we'll have to put some money in for that. Probably five or six thousand dollars. It's not going to cost us. It's just a pass through. We estimated, I think, five or six thousand dollars to do that election. And I don't know what to do with the other discrepancy. I, it's just hard to tell. You know, you don't know what's going to be on the ballot. You don't know how many races you're going to have. Don't know what Atkins is going to do. I'm sure their price is going to go up. You know, this April we were shocked with the bill that we got that was ten thousand dollars higher than the last April, but anything can happen so I don't know if you want to just let it ride and then ask for money later if we need it or put some in there now and not use it or exactly what to do but so we do um, this um, spreadsheet here <laughs> where we kind of go through and try to estimate uh, how many different poll workers at different positions and what their costs are and then we go down and we also try to estimate Atkins bills uh, for each election and that's how we came up with the numbers in in our budget and actually we've kind of cushioned those as well um, tried to not be too strict on what numbers we put in there, but. So you've taken into consideration five, five elections. Um, we did not know when we did the, that there will be a, what is it, March election? February. February election. Uh, we did not know that one. And that's not, budget. that's. So we will have. That's to. not countywide though. No, it's just public water supply for okay. to be in Towson, Wardsville. Okay. So we will have to add some additional for that additional election because yeah. we have not estimated that in. And in turn, some revenue back. Cause They'll pay for the whole election. The, pu the public water supply is paid yeah. for. It's just, just that we have to have the money to pay our bills. So I think we have told them probably five or six thousand dollars. So her numbers otherwise look correct? Is that the I think she just puts them in a different format. So I, I think I probably was a little bit high. So if you did 250,000. Yeah, I'm thinking for elections, probably, that would pretty much need cover to add six to both sides. Yeah. So you would add six to election expense so on the, yeah. and the election expense revenue as well for the February election. Okay. Okay. Yeah, if y'all can live with that, then. Yeah, we'll see how it plays out. Yeah, I don't, I don't see anything unforeseen unless Atkins something there with them. But. Okay. It's pretty captive, you know. You pretty well have to go with them, so. Well, I stayed with him a lot of time then. Yeah, you did good. Where's, where's my prize? Do I get <laughs> Is that it then? Is that? I mean, really, that's only yeah. thing I noticed. That... Yeah. Well, if Brian ever finds that dairy shop, we'll hang it over in your office. There you go. Yeah. Hang it in the back room. Maybe that'll warm us up. Put some gloves in your budget you for next year. <laughs> yeah, put some gloves in <laughs> and hat. Thank you. So are they warmed up a little bit? It's hot in here. I asked Greg, like, we have an election room. It's just a small room in the back that has its own thermostat. I said, why can't we move that thermostat out in our office and duck those out? And he said, well, you have to budget the money for it. So I talked to him. He don't mind. 
maybe well, we did talk about it a little bit yesterday because it was like a tennis match watching people come in and out. <laughs> yeah, but some, some, somewhere, <laughs> yeah. you know, within the next year, so we're going to have to kind of figure out what we're doing with the okay. courtroom well, and everything. So, hate to do uh, those are on a separate one. Yeah, we might be able yeah. to do something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Reimbursement, it into EMS so reimbursement, and plan it, and make it oh, a little yeah. more in and out account. Anything you can do to push Greg a little bit on my side? EMS reimbursement account. Okay. So this is your copy. Right. Okay. okay. This is your copy. Okay. You Matthew. One. And then this is where we need your signature. Is it Matthew? Yeah, it is Matthew. And I'll run up and get to Jennifer's. She and her office. She should be up there. Okay. And then James. They only have an hour for you, though. Is that going to be enough? <laughs> I hope it's way less than that. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Okay. Here we go. Do I need to sign it? No. Okay. Right, and same with this. This is. These require only one signature for the ADH. <coughs> one on four. Mm -hmm. so, okay. <coughs> Thank you. And I'll get you a new one of these. Whatever. Well, that's the sales Everything's signed. Whatever you want to start. Right, I'll leave one with uh, Chris then. I mean, uh, well, so <laughs> this year kind of thing. Okay, so page 107. You go ahead, Matt. You got changes or things that need to be changed? So I have a, only a few areas of concern. I think otherwise the budget is pretty well done. Um, Chris and I worked on it, um, you know, in her office uh, to try to get as close as we could. Um, the medical expenditures for medical supplies, uh, a little concerned with that um, based on some of the things we had to do in the last two months um, in order to kind of keep that going. We had to move some uh, funds out of contingency uh, in order to keep that. So as our call volume increases, our expenditures in that realm will also continue to increase. Uh, so do you have a number you're thinking? Um, so I'm thinking that if we put another 15 in there, um, I think that should be good on that. Um, and so that's the that that's the only place I think we probably need to go. And I think I originally requested I think we were both at 180 on that, but um, since looking at it a little closer, I do think we need to go up a little bit on that. Good part is, is if we don't need it, that can always go back in because that's pretty much just a, it either is or isn't. Um, and then the only, the other one that uh, is uh, public relations for uh, community involvement and uh, doing uh, injury prevention education, part of the tenant of EMS is making sure that we have uh, that involvement with the community, stop the bleed, things like that. Um, we are one of, I believe, three agencies in the state that offer post uh, credit for training uh, officers, corrections, even police officer. Uh, they get actual continuing education. We've gotten certified to do that uh, education for them. I know we've done things at the prison. I believe we have some uh, other officers and uh, agencies that are asking about coming and having us do that as well. So. Um, but we'd like to be doing that at the schools and things like that because I do believe that, uh, for an example, active shooter stop the blues is really where that came from. Um, uh, a majority of those that are able to be saved uh, in an active shooter, if they if they do uh, end up deceased, it's generally because they extenuated or bled out. And so that's an important training that we'd like to start giving. We've done, I believe, one of the high school or uh, middle schools so far, and we've been reaching out to do that training as well so things like that be able to you know go out there in the community uh, and be able to you know have those things one of the things that we've kicked around is doing uh, home safety inspections before newborns come home uh, to check to show you know hey your outlets aren't covered or hey these are safety issues because we would rather prevent that injury versus being just a response agency strictly if we can prevent that that's better for the community so that's one of the things we've kicked around as well. Um, Where is that public relations in there? Is that under training or? There's, it's not in there at the moment. This would be a new line for them. Okay. And what was the ask for that? Um, so we, didn't we initially have one in there and we pulled it? No. It's okay. never been in there before. Oh, I thought. I think you did ask. I think it was in your original. Yeah, it was in my original. Um, I think we 
asked for eight, but I could be wrong. Eight thousand. Yes, sir. Um, we did pull some money out of uh, meetings and training uh, aspect of things, um, and that was uh, training was the one we uh, pulled ten out of that. Um, that we will be giving up a class in order to do that, um, but I'm. I think the classes that we have scheduled are planned with that 20. It, it suffice, will suffice for that aspect. Um, the only thing that we did want to discuss, and it's more on what your thoughts are on, is, is if we wanted to reimburse 15. Um, I think if we went to eight, we'd be okay on the public relations for this year. Um, and then uh, if we wanted to reimburse uh, current employees, uh, for paramedic school once they completed and did a, offered a certificate, you know, they offered their license, then we would reimburse them for a commitment of service. So it would be, uh, you know, if we, you know, pay your $7,000 paramedic school, you give us three years on a prorated basis. Um, we can't do a three or nothing uh, that basically becomes an indentured uh, servant, basically, under the law is my understanding. So we would have to prorate that out. Um, but it's my opinion is it's better to homegrown your uh, paramedics uh, if you have good EMTs. Uh, generally, they're committed to the organization and the mission that we do. And so if we're able to do that, that's great. If we can't, I understand. Um, but I have had several employees ask, um, would the county be willing to reimburse them uh, if they went to paramedic school? Um, currently, the EMTs make approximately 31000 so for them to you know put that seven thousand out there it is a significant amount of their pay already. So just something to consider. But otherwise, I think we're good um, on on that. I know in one of our requests for uh, positions was that logistics officer um, that we had, and we shifted it to a training. Um, we did find that to be a cost saving uh, aspect this year. Um, we had David doing that um, before he got promoted. Um, we'd like to see that. On our initial request, uh, we also had an additional administrative assistant. We've pulled that out to try to stay within that budget process. Um, so if we can do the logistics, I think that that would be a, a fair compromise. But other than that, I think we're pretty satisfied with what Chris and I were able to come up with. I'm going to go back to logistics. Yes, that sir. one we had in last year's budget, right? We did. Um, and then so it's just an open position. It's not, so we yeah. moved that over to the training. So we made that one the training because we had some okay. training items that uh, that we found were deficient. And so um, that that position is still much needed in training. Um, so we'd like to keep that and then add that logistics officer back in. The logistics officer takes care of the fleet maintenance. They take care of the station stuff. Um, there's a lot of times where, you know, um, other departments aren't able to support, and so that individual ends up doing some maintenance uh, work as well. They did, are in charge of the supply order and finding the best pricing. Um, anytime that we purchase anything, that individual is the, the first person that goes through that process. So um, David was very successful and saved us a lot of money, and we believe that that would be a, a way to continue to help keep those costs down. Yeah, that was the one problem I had when we moved David up was he was doing such a good job he was. as logistics officer. I'm like, he was, and there's just too much work <laughs> to have him remain uh, focused on that. So, so my budget does include a logistics officer, so one added position. Um, something else we need to talk about is the salary scales that were originally adopted did not have a salary scale for his administrative staff. Um, we have included them with the same percentage as other employees. So they're not on a step schedule like the rest of them are at the moment. Um, Matt did propose some schedules for them. But right now we just have them in there as a percentage. And for that, I can pull that up. I didn't realize that. I'm sorry. You have the logistics officer in your budget? Uh, yes, sir. That is in there. No. Yes. Yes. That was in there. Okay. So one added position. You didn't have an admin assistant in there then? No. No. He oh, removed no. it before. I removed it when we were talking. Okay. I, I removed that. Okay. Anything else?
61.5. Plus benefits. That's how it was. They're up on the screen there. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, Do you have that stuff somewhere? I thought I sent no. that. Do you have it out on the drive somewhere? Or? I do not, know. I mean, like... I thought he sent it to you all, did he not? I thought I did, but if not, mm -hmm. um, okay. I may not have. Yeah, I couldn't find any EMS department request stuff. You couldn't find it. So he also proposed creating supervisor of training. Is that what the title was? It's not in there as well either. What? Supervisor of training. Oh, the training for the... I have a different title. So your current training officer bumping oh, her up. So her current position, so this is the nurse that we hired, um, one of the nurses we hired that's in charge of training. She's the chief of training. And so right now we have them listed equal, but she is technically a division head within the department. Um, and so she would be third in line that should something happen or if Dave and I are available, she's the one that would take over the department in that process. So through the lines of succession, she would be third in that process. Um, and so if you can scroll down just a little bit. Is she the one that has the trauma? And and she's the a flight nurse? The flight no, nurse. so that's, she's, a, okay. she's actually a field medic, the flight okay. nurses. She, uh, she was the one that's currently in there, uh, in that spot. She uh, worked at Capital Region. Uh, she was actually a part-time paramedic for us um, and was a full-time uh, RN over at Cap Region, or BSN actually, um, and came over to, to do you know, the training with us in the, the training chief position. So um, with that, um, we'd like to push her salary up um, her added responsibilities and, and things like that. Um, so what we did is we kept the battalion chief the same. Um, the training officer would remain the same in line with the battalion chief. The chief of training uh, would then be, so again, she'd be kind of that third person in the tier. Um, and then creating a step for the deputy chief position as well. Um, I'll tell you that, you know, it, it, it's David currently, but the, the individual in there putting in a ton of hours like the rest of us um, but I mean he's underpaid for what he's doing uh, in my opinion so we'd like to you know appropriately compensate him generally the way um, I've seen a, a lot of agencies is there's a ten thousand dollar gap between the different levels of positions um, so that's what we've tried to do as much as possible to create that equity uh, with the command staff um, I did not request a raise last year nor this year um, and more so to try to take care of, you know, those below me. And then if you scroll down, it's more. That's the top of the scale. What do you want? Uh, is there, the rest of the scales are on there too, right? They're at the top, but those are the oh, ones okay. that so, are already. So the only other one was the admin assistant. We didn't have a scale for her. Um, and so we felt that we needed to at least put a scale in for her as well. Um, I think that one's going to be hard because we have administrative assistants in other departments 
that are not getting this kind of jump in their pay at this kind of rate. I mean, you can argue that he has positions that are not in other departments. That administrative assistant position is in multiple departments. Same thing. Right. Right. There are. Uh, I know last year she didn't get a raise when the rest of the department did, and so she didn't get the raise that because it was EMS wide got the the early you know when we adopted that. Um, she was excluded from the raise last year because um, she was considered part of EMS. So she didn't get that percentage last year. It was a flat dollar last year. Or a flat dollar. She didn't get that added in to hers last year. And so we're trying to, to make up for that part of it because she was overlooked in that process. Um, and so we would like to try to make that more equitable um, and at least, you know, retro. So we just missed that then? Huh? Did we just miss that then? Well, if so she wasn't in on the rest of the races. Then she it it be. was more of the fact that we made those changes in October, and it was said EMS wouldn't right. have any changes January first. But we so, didn't adjust hers at all, so she probably should have been qualified should, for the probably COLA. should have gotten the cola. Yes, but it was yes, How long not was included. There? Yeah, her at that time. I mean, it, I understand how she, that she was there. there. She was there before I got there. It was like seven months or eight months. I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that. So she should have gotten the flat 520 that was given last year as a COLA. That's, yeah, I would think so. Okay, that's what all the other administrative systems. So I, I understand keeping them, you know, throughout the county, you know, somewhere. Um, I would just like to, if we can, either retro back to make that up for her or moving forward, adjust that to over time make that back up to her. And I, did, I didn't know that it had been overlooked either until a few months ago when she brought that up, so. So I'm a little concerned at some of the jumps. <laughs> like, <sighs> Deputy Chief, the jump between starting and step one is pretty significant. Right, oh, sorry, it's, it's the gray. So I believe that's what he's making now, and so that was what the second, that sec or the first step, uh, isn't uh, even what we were uh, at with when Steve was in that position. So we were trying to slowly make that more equitable of that separation. Uh, when I'm not here, or you know, and he fills in, you know, in my absence, or and, and to be honest, even outside of my absence, I mean, he's doing a ton of work um, that position is you know very much needed so um, you know the, the two big ones are the training you know, the chief of training and the deputy chief I think are the two big ones that we would like to see you know adequately compensated for what their job entails and their qualifications that they bring as well these changes then? No. So, so the chief of training, the deputy chief, and the administrative assistant are new pay charts okay. that he's proposing. The other ones are currently in place. So do we have uh, a good no, training? No, not a battalion chief one either. Officer. Yeah, I know we were having trouble. We were having issues before. So I'm sorry, sir. Our trainings oh, yeah. gotten Same better. And um, so we're still trying to find that second okay. training officer. Um, okay. We, we thought we had identified one, um, and then the pay had wasn't enough um, for what you know they we were going to pay them at that. I believe it was sixty one five. Um, so we that's been our challenge with that position, is the, the starting pay. Um, we, so we've actually gone through and had three we've presented three offers and uh, all of them rejected once we discussed pay 
So that was an issue with the training officer, that second training officer. So we're having some difficulty finding that. Um, with the gap going into too much detail, I, I think that we, a bad training officer can have some pretty big impacts on things. So we were trying to find that right person and you know, get that person. We don't want to make a mistake in that hire, I guess is the right way to put it. Um, so the answer to your question is, is our, our process is improving. Jessica, um, Jesse, who is in that spot, is doing a great job as the chief of training. Um, she is overwhelmed with the amount of things that we're having to do. We've gone back and found that training records hadn't been kept adequately for four and five years. So she's, at, she's going in and trying to find all those things. Continuing education certificates had not been issued or appropriately documented. Um, we found out that um, there were training things where they weren't meeting the state. They were performing the courses, but they weren't doing the the pre-work that the state requires us to do in order to issue those training education, you know, continuing education things. All of that, we're having to retro go back, see if we can find the information, put it together. Um, we've actually been bringing in uh, one of our part-time paramedics that recently was full-time, went part-time for family reasons. We brought her in occasionally to help Jesse try to keep her head above water in that process. So um, she is absolutely worth every penny that we're proposing on that. Um, and what she brings to the table being a BSN. And you know, when if we start looking at that critical care aspect, she brings that aspect into that training piece as well. So um, that one, you know, the, the two that are the most important uh, that I would fight for the hardest would be the chief of training and um, the deputy chief, at least somewhere in that scale. You know, we, we need to revise that a little bit or look at it, but. I do feel like we need to adequately compensate them. Um, you know, it, I understand the administrative assistant part of that, but I do, if we can't put her on a scale, then I think we do need to either retro back the fact that she didn't get that or, you know, adjust it to where she's making a little bit more to, to make that up in the future because um, I don't think we were equitable in that. The other aspect of that is, is the time it takes to train and to get these individuals up to speed should one of them leave, it'll actually yearly cost us more in order to, you know, to do that. So we, we don't want them to leave either. So right now, so Jesse, so Jesse, so Jesse, right now, no, makes, I got the chart. Oh. so uh, right now, Jesse makes sixty-one five, um, <coughs> as being in charge of that division, um, and then I believe um, the deputy so, chief okay. is at seventy-six. So chief of training is at sixty-one five. Correct, and so she would be making the same as the Not person she was responsible to, to lead. Right, so currently she would fall into the training, the second column. Right. So the gray column is where yeah. she's currently. Okay, gotcha. And her, so her, her subordinate would be making the same as what she was making. Well, currently, right now, they would be the same title. So you would be creating a title of chief of training, right? Well, so she has that title in, within the department. They are one has to be responsible for the either for the other. I mean, having two of equal, then I, I don't think that's probably the the right way to go about that because you have to have somebody that is ultimately responsible for that division within our department. And I don't think they're exempt at the moment. They are exempt at the moment. They've been exempt since I've been here. No, no, they're not. They're already uh, overtime. They're not a salary. Been exempt. Maybe they're not working on it. But they will need to go back because they have been strictly an eight hour because we were told they were exempt, is what we had. 
And so if we, we can have that job description reevaluated. Okay. So I'm if that's the case, then we need, to, we need to go back and look at that scale because right now they have been only put in as exempt because we've been adjusting that they work. We try to adjust their hours as much as we can, but they are, we have not been putting overtime in for them. We have them as exempt. So, if that's not the case, then we need to go back and fix that. Maybe right. They're listed in salary. Budget? When we do our pay, like it's submitted as salary. So, like when it's in DS and it says salary. The one of them is yes. Yes. So there's three of them right now. Uh, so the battalion chiefs are not salary, they were hourly, but the training right, right. and logistics would be I didn't salary. think training was. Yeah. I knew the other one was. I'm thinking training logistics. is too. Okay. Yeah, they, those both should be because they're listed under salary when you go to do the pay, like in BSA. So. Yes, they, they, they are. Salary on they yes. do. Okay, so they were salary, that's what I thought. But I, if, if not, we can fix that. So you're wanting to take the church current training officer that you have now make her the chief of training? Correct, so she's currently the one that's responsible for the training division, so when we are able to identify that second one. Um, so that's, the idea is, is that she would be the third in succession, um, you know, should David and I have to go to a conference, she would run the department, or should we both, he and I have an issue, or one of us is no longer here, and as that progression and movement within the department. Um, what we found was because there was no adequate oversight, we had um, some issues that we had to address earlier in the year. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that that doesn't repeat itself. in your budget, Kristen? Or I, I do not. Like I said, for... You just have a percentage raise. I have a percentage raise for anyone for that's in the administrative. Right. For those two individuals, right? Because the... For the deputy chief, for, for the, the deputy training, chief the, for battalion chiefs, for... Yeah. Battalion that. chiefs should have been in there because they've always been on a staff. So. The only people that should, that weren't on steps would be David and I. Um, Jesse, and the admin assistant. And the admin assistant, correct. Jesse would, Jesse already had a step scale. We're just trying to change the scale for her. So, right, she's making that 61.5 now. They and didn't have a scale. Who didn't have a scale? Your training and logistics. Training and logistics were under the same scale as the battalion chiefs. So are the chief of training and training officer logistics, are they going to be a step above battalion chief or are they no, come so down and step over here in the same? So the, the logistics <coughs> and the training officer would be on the same battalion chief because that's how we had it structured last year. Where's the scale? chief of training would be, so she would basically be stepping out of that pay scale and into her own pay scale. She'd be, she'd be third in line, so then she'd be, he, she would be over top of the time chief's Correct. training officer. Correct. Okay. Where's the logistics officer fit in that? Then? The battalion chief, like in that, in that, in that pay scale. So if you look on the, even on that scale, it says, if you look at the scale of logistics and training it's the exact same scales of battalion chiefs we just wanted to break them out like on title but they're the exact <laughs> same scales and one of the issues are that you know because we have had them salary <clears throat> that they're not making they don't have that overtime capability. So we, technically we have paramedics that are making more than those individuals in those positions because they have overtime opportunity. So 
we're just, like I said, we're trying to balance that as best we can. they get to make though. I'm sorry. It's kind of a choice they get to make though if they want to have a 48 hour shift or 24 hour shift, have overtime and it is. make it or do they want something more, I guess I'll call it stable. And, you know, more of a Monday through Friday. Shift. Sure. So, so you know, there's got to be some trade out there too. We may, we may have done like the, the training chief wrong. I think <coughs> instead of the steps. I'm sorry. I said we may have done the training chief wrong, but we did a percentage instead of the step, I'm pretty sure. It's like where it says assistant chief. Right. That was what their, their title was previously, but those are the battalion chief positions currently. So they, for whatever reason, they call them assistant chiefs, um, but they run their shift as a battalion chief for us. So we can clean up that position titles there to make sure that they're adequately listed. So we did percentages for the chief, deputy chief, battalion chief of training, and the financial assistant because those were the four proposed pay scales that were not approved previously. And if we need to not raise mine in order to facilitate one of the others, I'm okay with that. Oh, damn it. Do you have a cell phone? go to page 104 I think that's where we've kind of landed with capital there's the list you just like doing that don't you I still wouldn't mind sometime putting in like scholarships for paramedics <coughs> even if we did like two a year or something you show me where you're cutting it from I, I don't well, know gonna donate it to Sam Bushman Memorial Scholarship I will I tell you, one. we worked really hard to cut down the budget to I know, get to where I know, we were. So I know. I if, think somewhere, if you're adding, somewhere down the road. Yeah. Because the thing is, if you can keep them for three years, <laughs> then because it seems like paramedics, you know, it's there's a nationwide shortage. Just yeah, so it's know. it's. Um, what is it about a year's training? Kind of contract. So we would have a contract. So we we've got that available. We do that now. So that's what we need to do so. with. Yeah. A certain amount of time, and if not, they have to the training. Yes, ma'am. So. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> I think it was based on, I think, what the sheriff does for his, and they just, she changed it to meet the needs for us. Any questions on capital stuff? Um, Page 104 has the list. So, so under the capital request on those three ambulances there, since they ended up costing 192, you can take, you know, that number of their drops. That's from what's listed there. So that's roughly 38,000 a piece that drops off of that. Do you have any upfit to do to those once they get here, though? Um. So we will have a little bit, um, but some of that will come out of our current ones that we're going to deadline. Um, so there'll be one that will need a, a, kind of the upfit, but I thought we'd put that in there. Um, so we have for the dispatch radios for vehicles, there's one already in there for that. Okay. Um, and I, 
150 is Sierra Wireless, so we probably need to add a second one into the Sierra Wireless there, because um, that was just based on two, so we need to put another 3200 for that. But everything else, and then as far as putting in the stretcher uh, mount, I believe that came out to $1,500 this last year for each one, so that would be the only other thing per truck. So. Yeah, so that would be it. So it would be 1,500 times three, I believe it is. So that should be it. And so under the turnout and bulletproof vest, on those items specifically, um, under like the bulletproof vest, that's only if we were to get an employee that didn't fit in some of the ones. Like if somebody leaves and we've got a properly fit them because we just don't have that size that's what that is in there for we don't suspect that'll happen but we did want to include that just in case um, we did have the same thing for turnout gear it looks like that was pulled um, so turnout gear is still encumbered from 19 because we have a few still remaining so I think we're okay. that's right because I think we're okay with that so um, I'm okay with that not being in there um, and anything that's still encumbered this year will go into next year that we haven't paid. So that would be additional to this total. Are you guys good with me changing the ambulance amount to 192 a piece? Yes. Well, so we go to 576 instead of 690. And then the first watch um, that was encumbered already. That's encumbered, but we should be paying that here. I mean, we could probably issue a check next week if we wanted to, so it didn't cr roll over because they just approved that. Well, there would be a payment in 20 then as well, wouldn't it? Um, there, that would be under maintenance, and it's like $2,000. It moves to its operating budget once it goes to just an annual <laughs> maintenance. So that would technically come out if we paid it ahead of time, or it rolls forward, but that wouldn't be something that, that's not new money, I guess is the way to put that. And same thing with the turnout here, so that 24000 that 19 so roughly 20,000 and 25,000 those are encumbered um, from the current budget that would roll forward so, so that 55,000 roughly would come off that 297 that's sitting there for capital 55 of that is already you needed to add 3200 back in for Sierra wireless right correct sir and another 4500 for striker mounts correct <coughs> Sierra-Wireless is the fourth one down. Yeah, my list in here is different. The third one down, I'm sorry. Oh, you just passed it. Why do I not have anything in there? I, it was there. Uh, that's the antenna. It's gotta be. <sighs> Can you filter through like department requested? Maybe that'll kind of move stuff out of the way. Well, so my list doesn't match yours. It doesn't match the list in here. Why is that? Oh, because that striker paper. John, who won last night? You or the mayor? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you take your phone through the... Uh, no, no, uh, I did my watch. Oh, I have it combined together. You're going to have to work on the this a little harder sirens next year. The sirens and the Sierra Wireless are all oh, grouped together. Wow. Okay. I know. Sure. So you were okay. right up here yesterday, and you talked about it a little bit. And Did you walk out of here without even a dime? No. Now I feel bad. I gave him... So are you I'll guys, get over it, but I mean, I feel bad. Are you guys good with adding an additional Sierra wireless and then the 1500 for the striker cop mounts? And that would be times three on those. For the, the 1500 times right. three. Mm -hmm. So he, he 
he was eliminating a few things, right? Well, the ambulances are less than right. Right. Like Drop the ambulance, so it'd be an additional seventy-seven hundred total. But weren't we? Uh, were we going to pay this first watch, first pass thing at twenty-four seven eighty-eight or? If you do, then you'd have to just reduce the contingency. Then. Well, no, I think that's already was in. The, wasn't already that was encumbered in the capital already. So that one's encumbered in there. So either way, you're right. either going to pay it this year or you're going to pay yeah. it this year. Yeah. The money's already still sitting there from this year because we've encumbered that like in April or something. I'm good with adding the 3,200 for the Sierra Wireless and mm -hmm. 4,500 for the cuts. Somebody else. Well, I'm fine. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to add yeah. that 7,700. So you got that response vehicle. Are we getting rid of something? So this one, so we can get rid of one of the the old explorers. I think it is the or four focus. Are not focus. How many we have right now? Three. We have four. Four. Um, the one is the one that we had discussed about giving over to uh, Greg. I think is yeah. was looking for one. So one of our things is as we try to move equipment and stuff, we we don't have a vehicle to move large items. Um, so, you know, not necessarily supplies, but, you know, the big items that won't well, fit in yeah, the back of a Tahoe. Stretcher or something. Right. And the Tahoe, they're going to have command boxes in them, so that's not space you can use anyway. So we don't have anything in within the department to move big items. Um, and so that would ultimately be assigned to... Um, but we are eliminating one of them. We would we would pass that over to um, we're eliminating it whether from our it yeah. to somebody yeah. or we yeah. throw yeah. Correct. it in a ditch from our department and the pickup right. they can still use as a quick response because it'll be a supervisor correct so we be a supervisor how much more stuff are you going to need to outfit it with um so we have everything is that so we already have that listed in there so like the vehicle that's all in there with yes sir okay. And I think that the incident command, my hope is to get them lower than that per. I just, we gotta do a little build design. We've had a hard time getting somebody to design it and then, but not be able to guarantee them that that's who we would go with. So nobody, they gotta do CAD drawings and all of that. So we've had a hard time trying to find somebody to do that without basically saying, you design it, we're going with you. And so we, we would probably bid that out with a build design aspect to try to get that going. Um, but I, Hoping that it comes in less than that. But so does the truck need to be a quick response vehicle or can it be a truck? Uh, it should be a quick response vehicle uh, because we can dual be. use it. <laughs> I would I would rather it be a quick response. Because you're going to have a paramedic in there, so if we put the equipment in there. Um, Maybe not. The administrative assistant can go and pick up your boxes of she drives. whatever. And yeah. I don't know if that's a good idea. I mean, for whatever reason, it could be anybody. So I mean, anyone, even your drive. logistics officer, does not have to be to a to paramedic. Uh, it could be somebody that's good with organizational skills and good with uh, vehicle maintenance. So, so it doesn't have to be a, and doesn't even have to be paid that much. <coughs> so we could but, fit that position even at lower position, non supervisory. And you could, but if I told them I needed to order. XYZ medication and no other negotiating medication if they order the wrong concentration because they don't understand the drugs or something like that. I, I would be concerned of having somebody that's responsible because once you order them, you can't return that stuff. Because there's not a UPC code or something, I mean, that's very specific. Uh, so there's nationwide shortage. So, an example, Epi to 1 to 10,000 in a pre filled syringe is currently in a nationwide back order. Dash 1 or dash 2? Uh, yeah, right. So they're on a nationwide back order. If I said, hey, you need to find an alternative of how we're going to do that, that individual needs to understand that you would take that be one to 10 or one to 1,000 diluted out and then be able to create that. And, and they have to be able to understand those processes and what that entails. So I, I would be concerned. If not that we couldn't, but that lack of knowledge. Like of chemists now. But no, but it's like the first lieutenant. You, you need. You need somebody who can do everything. I would. Um, not saying you can't. I would say I would be concerned if you did. I understand. Uh, so that 
that wasn't really taken into consideration in the order and stuff. But. Is there any other questions about the capital stuff? I mean, we're not approving any of that. Right. It's just the list, right? Yeah. So maybe come back in January, and he can talk about which which ones he wants to go with first, and what bids we want to put out, just like our capital. Yeah, I don't think I have any more questions on it. We tried to keep it as low as we could on that. I mean, you guys made a good investment into the, the county this year, and so we've tried to keep that much lower. Well, we addressed a lot of things that may have been insufficient last year. So. You're bringing us up into the 21st century. Yeah, I'm I'm sir. Any other questions for me on the end of the budget? No, nope, I think that's it. <coughs> I appreciate your time. 45 right. minutes. 1030. She's not coming. Well, yeah. I'd like dispatch don't get any. We can talk about it. Take it five or ten minutes. Yeah. Okay. I'll take that back. Oh. Okay. Oh. So. Well, for, for uh. Okay. Uh, that would be awesome, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no problem. We may still be on here. There you are. Just thought I'd let you know. <laughs> you want to talk somewhere else? No. No?
always come in down with the lock okay. and oh, okay. I called Joe and he's gonna be here by ten thirty. So okay. I may have got to go in here too early. But he'll detect the Okay, she brought this back over too because she said she sent it to wherever they needed to send it to, but this is a new form. They wouldn't accept the old W nine form. So yeah, I need you to sign it, but then Karen said on the last one, you just check the box exempt, mm -hmm. but we don't have a code, do we? That word exempt? No. Well, I don't know what you fill out right there. I got one plus from Paul. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, that's, 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 no, these, these are cute I mean, little packets. Here. I mean, they really are good. That's why I brought them, because we didn't have as many kids. I'm good. Yeah, they're what's. That's oh, Halloween pretzels. They're shaped like. You know. No. Here, here. See, it's a bat. They're they're not bad. They're not that good. Oh. Um, Good morning. Or would you rather have a Tootsie Roll? I have Tootsie Roll no, like from Knights of Columbus. I don't like Tootsie Roll pretzels. Did you turn Jeff's test? His are up here? Yeah. What? Christina, he was going to leave them in here for today. Oh. There's the good pretzels. I like these. Wow. Those look like good pretzels and bad pretzels. Jeff had made some. Steve has seeds on them. Oh. Oh. Those depends on what kind of seeds they are on. Okay. Yeah. I make a, I my, my uh, kids love a, it's a spicy garlic uh, one that has, it, that's, that's spicy. <laughs> Apparently the, the guys up in uh, Columbia say it goes very good with beer. <laughs> a lot of that salty, <laughs> yeah. spicy stuff. Does. Yeah, they, they really, yeah. yeah. Ask my yeah. son, ask my 21 year old. Well, they, 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 we're still on. Yeah, still on. We're still on. It's alright. You can say how, how wonderful we are and how you love us and love life. See, I shouldn't have eaten those. They're addictive. <laughs> yeah. I just have to read What did you say they were? He did. He just fell there with a square I like those. Well, I'm just in case. <laughs> anyway, they were going on and on about how you need to add that and how you get the pads or thin. I'm just trying to. We'll, we'll find someone to do it for you. Okay, okay. Um, is there any chance that. I'm good with that. Pass them. I'm not involved in yeah. Are you ready to go right after her? I am. Okay. Okay. We're going to move things around a little. Okay. Whatever you say. That would be fantastic. I don't think ours will take too terribly long. Okay. As long as Sam knows his dad, mine won't take long either. Don't you think you need to put a, a red high performance vehicle no. in your fleet? So that if there's something you need to get there quickly, 
Yes. Like a red Corvette. <laughs> I was going to say the Batmobile, but all that's not a red Corvette. I, well, I'm just, I'm, there's so many uses. I would just take it like that. We can see, we can see if we can get a, a sweet deal on one. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're allocated 15, I think, for this, for 2020. I think they've got 13 of them sold. So we have, yeah. to, we have to operate pretty quickly. So you said you're going to eat some of those? Yeah. One of my, uh, I didn't eat breakfast, and now I'm just hungry. It's going to make me hangry. His family owns the Laura Lure? dealership no, up in San Louis. I don't Lewis. get hungry until And I guess they, Sorry, all theirs are already accounted for. Yeah. Already sold out of the no we'll see if we can, if we can, if we can put that in your budget, then you one of these days we need the recipe. All right, thank you. Jeff, we need the recipe. Oh, I took a picture of the stuff so I could give that to y'all. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm similar to they, them. they wouldn't share with me. I have to and what was the brand of pretzel again? Hold on. Those are the ones people make. Snyder's. The roll -out. Oh, those are good. Snyder's. Snaps pretzels. And then it's good season, zesty Italian dressing. That's it? And oil? And half cup oil. And then I use other seasonings and experiment with different things too. And I've a pound of salt. I'll show you too. A pound of salt. Yeah, I do literally. There's, I get the big giant salt on there. It's awesome. Can you just sit next to me? Because I won't remember. I'll send it to you. Okay. Holly is on page 69. So you go ahead, Holly, if you've got changes you want to make, or... Where you want to start at? Whatever you don't... Wherever. You want to do the materials and supplies, the easy stuff, or... Okay. Sure. Right now your mileage is only at 2600 since we cut down an attorney it's really dropped because we're only really paying yours okay so i'd like to stay in that okay. um, i just thought that your projected might be oh that's my actual tell mr youngerman thank you yeah um, he has a county vehicle you know he has multiple county vehicles i know that he drives but it's so I asked him about that. It's for everybody, I for know, planning and. Plus, well, that's where a just, red Corvette would. It could. Well, you could go take uh, Greg's truck. <laughs> <laughs> I broke down once on the way to Callaway County and had to be rescued by a staff member. My alternator went out halfway. Okay. Okay. We'll keep Low going. Bench for we'll keep going. Okay. Um, Man, the helmet. Overall. Scooter. There you go. I'm thinking, I'm looking down the rest of the thing, all under, under materials and supplies, that should be okay. Um, rich under the contractual services, I, I mainly use rich bizarre, so you guys don't have to pay county uh, time. I use rich for most stuff, um, which isn't that much. Usually we can figure out our problems. go under um, for the personnel services um, we experimented this year and that uh, we did I interviewed to replace Amanda Landrum but um, for the salary what the salary that I had and the people that were doing <coughs> for it I 
decided just to try to see if I could do it myself. Um, and it's worked out, um, especially since Halloween's working with me to keep my course aids down. I've given my staff um, some more like paralegal type work. And um, we've been, we've gone 10 months now, we've been able to keep up. Um, I know we, we talked last year about the, the indirect cost that the county um, gets above whatever their total cost is. Expends out a year um, that had been going down because I was having to dip into it to pay for that additional attorney. Um, at Amanda's <coughs> last salary, um, with all the benefits and the health insurance and paying some, um, plus the increase in the retirement um, cost there, her position with all the fringes on it's like seventy thousand a year. Um, so. I haven't gotten any increases in the state budget in a long time, but they haven't cut me. And I got my new budget for this year, and they still haven't cut me. In, um, and I talked with them, and they don't see in anything in the near future any reason to cut what my budget is. And I'm not spending the whole budget, so I should next year be able to, and I did this year, get all the indirect costs. And <coughs> I haven't done November's reimbursement yet, and obviously not December's yet, but I'm estimating that profit above what um, our expenses are is about should be between 25 and 26 thousand and I'm willing to go ahead and, and not replace um, that person um, but and in taking on the additional work um, I believe that I should receive more benefit for doing that I know we talked about it last year but we put off doing it and I'll talk about Mr. Thompson about it, and I believe um, that he speak for himself. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, Holly has taken on more work, um, and with the calculation that we've made, I, I, I see no issue that the commission would like to uh, give her away. And, and I'm willing to just take on that extra work, and, and I would like out there that I believe my staff deserves also a little bit more because I have given them additional duties. Um, they're very well qualified. They do paralegal type work and they do um, intense supervision with defendants working as like probation officers because we do not have uh, probation officers supervising all of our defendants on the non-support caseload. Um, it's kind of specialized work and probation and parole just doesn't have the time to do it. Um, so we do not use their services at all on our caseload. Um, so they supervise on that. And also, in I've been you guys know I've been around here a long time. I've gone to a lot of prosecutors and I've seen a lot of assistant prosecutors come and go, and a lot of new assistant prosecutors come and go. Um, man, is one of our new ones. Um, but all the years, and it used to be years ago, the county used to make used to, used to have a thing where. 60,000, 40-60 on what my office did years ago. That's before your guys' this time. Uh, but um, with that 25,000, uh, I'm putting out there, and I have talked briefly with Locke about that, that I would like to propose to the commission to use, instead of that money just going st straight to general revenue for general revenue purposes, I would like to see that money go towards either salaries or bonuses for especially the young assistant prosecutors in our office because they're having such a hard time retaining them. I've seen so many of them come and go. Um, I know personally that um, Amanda, who worked for me, almost went to the AG's office. I know if she would have lived on the other side of town where she's living at now, the Boone County's wanted her for a child support position if I was approached to, I said, no, I'm not doing it. Well, would you know, know anybody else that wanted to? And they would have, but you know, she doesn't want to, didn't want to commute because she, where she lives at. But if she lived on up in the Ashland area, it would have been because of what they, they pay more. And losing, you know, to the AG's office, and we've just seen so many of them come and go that that's what I would like to see done with that money to maybe retain. Cases, I mean, it used to be back in my old days, we would have a couple murders a year, a couple of serious A felonies a year, but the amount that they're seeing now, I mean, it, to have prosecutors that don't.
don't have it, you know, that much experience handling those cases fresh out of law school. And if you want to get the um, assistants who are in the top part of their class, the top quarter or top third, you're not going to get those with the kind of the salaries that these students <coughs> are. And, to re and once they invest all the time in training them, that's when somebody else steals them away. That's what I would like to see. And I'm sure Mr. Thompson's going to be looking and trying to retain some of the staff that he's put the effort into training this year. Thoughts? So just a little background. So currently my proposed does include that additional attorney. So that is still in there. It was not eliminated yet. Um, and that leaves with, with no indirect cost. I mean, Basically, you're not going to be getting indirect costs anymore. You, you know, I could use, you know, I mean, a part-time person. I'm not going to say I could use a part-time person, but um, if you pay somebody, you know, like myself or somebody that has some experience, they can do the job because because of if you work it right and manage how you do the courts and it's just getting along well with with all the different judges. And I've worked for a year with uh, um, Kevin Crane and Sue Crane, two of the judges over there in Callaway County. And now my felony cases, instead of going to in front of four circuit judges four times a month, they're gonna transfer them into Sue Crane, um, who's gonna supervise them. And she has given me a designated docket times. That is only my caseload, and I'm not sitting there waiting for all the other cases. In Cole County, we did do designated child support docket days where I'm not, I go in and do all my stuff in one fell swoop, and then um, I'm not appearing in front of the other judges too much. And that works as long, you know, you, we have got as long as you judges and not get crossed with any of them, but. So in the past, if you look back at like 19th budget, everything Holly brought in got paid out. So it was a balanced budget. Everything she spent got reimbursed. Um, going forward, if she would eliminate that attorney position, she now has some room to where she can get indirect costs back on that grant because she's not spending every dollar they're assigning to her. So she can claim the indirect costs based on our cost allocation. And it's 10% of whatever I spend that month. Like this year, like what they've given me in my budget, I'm not gonna spend quite all of it, so that money, is, I'm honestly not gonna get it. But then the state, We'll give it to another prosecutor's office because not all prosecutors' office get indirect costs. Only ones that were set up early and got it approved early on have that in their budgets. And so some prosecutors run out of money, um, so that can be used, to, you know, to help fellow prosecutors. But I will get reimbursed 100% this year and get 100% reimbursement cost, 10% of what my total. brings in excess dollars. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm bringing that excess dollar. And next year I will bring in 10% more if I don't hire another attorney. If we don't hire another attorney and, and continue to do things, I will bring in the 25, 25 or more. Um, and I didn't spend a lot this year, so 25, 26, it may be more next, next year. Um, depends on, you know, what, you know, if, uh, I got computers last year, um, but uh, if I have if I have more expenses, then so do we have a pr proposed amount of increase for Holly or? I, I have not come up with a proposed amount. Okay. Um, certainly, obviously, like I said, uh, she is doing more work, and I think uh, a raise is certainly. What position are we not filling? Is it legal assistant or a, an attorney? Attorney. PA, uh, PA one? APA. 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 APA okay. Which, when when I had it filled, I went back and what it cost me last year for Miss Landon's spot, and it was it was right a few hundred shy of seventy thousand. What it cost with her salary? She was making fifty two, fifty three, maybe. So basically, the beginning salary. something that was kind of what you think her additional duties are worth so 
Yeah, I, I'd be happy to sit down with Holly and we can uh, draft something up for you guys in that regard. I can have that to you uh, by next week's meeting with you, Brian. So, so are you going to take some of that? <clears throat> that no, the, the, indirect, the, the indirect cost, I mean, that won't be for any for my salary. My salary will be 100% reimbursed. What I'm proposing with the indirect cost is using it for trying to, to keep assistant well, prosecutors in the main office. The salary is like, what, 50000 <laughs> the, the starting salary is for... Uh, it was yes. 50, 51. Yeah, right. 51, use, so with the fringes... I'm just going to use a round number of 50, so obviously you're not going to propose a $50,000 raise for it. So we're no, going to no. look at trying to divvy that up among right. the other APA since no. they're going to be doing more work. That money can only be spent well, for child support. Right. Well, you under... 168, there's, I got, well, four of y'all, not counting the one that's uh, still open, right? All right, so there's four employees. So are you looking at, right, but only two. But he's her. asking, are you going to divvy up a portion of that to the other employees in that department? No, you, you can't, because the only money that I get from the state has to be spent on child support right. program. Your other employees that work with you. Oh, my other employees. Yes, we all can talk to. I mean, that you're talking yeah. about trying to retain some of your. Attorneys. Yeah, I, if I lose um, the three that I have now, I would. It, it, I'll only spend a lot more time in here than what I want to spend in here, um, because um, especially uh, Nikki Hartley is she, is she, and I don't think I'm going to lose her. Because my, the three staff, they get along great. They work great together. Um, the judges respect them. Um, they can, if I'm not a, around, um, I can tell them to do something. And, and they, the judges know with my authority that they'll take, do what they, um, they need to be done on cases when somebody's, um, for instance, I, I was in, in Utah and I was getting texts um, to take care of, they had somebody that was in jail having medical issues, it wasn't in our county, but to get them out so the county did not have to pay for those medical costs and getting that that done um, for me. Um, like Nikki's very, was running um, Excel reports for me um, for stuff that Judge Crane needed. Um, she does their own DNA testing um, um, that um, is trained to do that so we can get them done faster. We, sometimes she can go over in the jail and collects them in the jail so we can get get things done in the, the short timelines they get us to do paternities on. But yeah, but as for the, the, the profit that uh, above the child support off that's making, uh, my suggestion is, is hopefully to retain some of the, the prosecutors that the block has brought in when they're being tempted to go to other places. But, you know, they've got student loans they've got to pay, so retain them and I, you know, it seems like every time the, the, the amount of serious felonies we see coming in anymore is just. I'd say just have Locke get his proposal together for that then. And yep. Yeah, so and I can address it a little bit of that. Are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm done. Okay. He's ready to go. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Holly. Yeah, I'm going to go for the So, Locke is on page 76. Budget officer, uh, Kristen, if I recall right, you said that that kind of contemplated a three percent raise for employees, yes. uh, which I think is great. Uh, I think they'll all very much appreciate that. I know it's been a while since uh, some of them have even gotten any real raise at all. Um, there are one or two, and maybe just a few employees I would like to specifically kind of address as to why I think they might deserve a little bit more than that three percent raise. Um, because that would be kind of getting into some personnel stuff if, if we wouldn't mind doing that in a closed session maybe next week if we could take it up then if that's appropriate but um Talk got another people. phone going on or what huh keep hearing something oh oh there's some conversation outside sorry uh 
Brian, go somewhere else. <coughs> so, anyway, uh, if we could yeah, maybe just bring up yeah, on those specific individuals uh, next week. Closed session necessarily. It just means the door's closed. Anybody can come in at any time. Sorry, Hawk. Yeah, I know, right? No, you're, you're, you guys are good. Um, so as, as far as those few employees uh, that I would like to discuss specifically, maybe we could bring that up next week during closed session. Um, I know that next week we've also got uh, some conversation on the VOCA grant uh, that we uh, go for every year. And um, I've also brought Miranda uh, Lesh with me to discuss the potential VAWA grant we're, we're hoping to get. Uh, federal, some federal grant money. Um, in what do you know that? We, we don't know. Um, they, they never really tell you when it's, when you're going to find out until, until you find out. So I checked this morning. It is still under review. I will tell you the last time I applied for this grant in a different county, which was two years ago, we did not find out if we were approved or denied until January which causes quite a quite an issue because the grant covers January. Um, but as of right now, we do not know. It's still under review. Okay, thanks. And uh, and I guess we could go into some more depth on that. Well, today and, and then next week. I'll just finish up kind of with what I've, I've got here. Um, so just a couple other things of note um, that may pertain to, to budget. I know uh, Angie's gonna be coming back full time. So. Uh, just to clarify, that right. is included in my budget. Right. Um, Locke wanted to take her from part-time to full-time. He's currently paying her part-time salary. He's agreed to pay her full-time salary. So it would be an MOU if you guys are in agreement with that, but right. that is included in my budget. Yes. Sure. And um, a couple other things um, that relate to some things we're trying to do to uh, become not a little more self-sufficient and generate some more revenue. Um, we've we've made the decision to start taking on some of the DOR tax cases. Uh, previously, those were not being prosecuted uh, by this office. Um, Mr. Fox, uh, who was previously the first assistant in Audrain County, recommended that we start taking these cases on. He stated that in Audrain County, uh, that. Uh, revenue brought in about fifteen to twenty thousand dollars per year to the prosecutor's office as well as to the county general revenue uh, I believe it's ten cents of every dollar uh, goes ten cents goes to the prosecutor's office and then ten cents goes to the county itself um, so you know just based on obviously the population difference and, and the fact that DOR is housed here he said we could probably expect uh, maybe three to four times that amount uh, to be generated here in Cole County, uh, which would again allow me to be a little more, my office to be a little more self-sufficient in funding some things, and uh, obviously would generate some additional revenue for the county, maybe enough to buy Sam his red Corvette. <laughs> Whoa. And, uh, <laughs> Whoa. Um, in addition to that, uh, previously this office was not collecting reimbursement on DOC cases. Uh, that we get from the Department of Corrections. Uh, we are able to do so. I believe it's to the tune of about $450 per case. Um, and so that could also generate a significant amount of revenue uh, for the office um, if we're able to do that. I mean, I know we get typically about, uh, I was running the numbers on it, we've gotten as many as uh, in previous years about 100 plus uh, referrals on those cases. Now, obviously not all of those are going to get filed, uh, but you're still talking about uh, dozens, uh, if not more, DOC cases every year where we can also get some uh, additional revenue out of that, or reimbursement um, that this office was not previously seeking or getting. Um, so other than that, um, I know that Miranda has her VAWA stuff here to present. I know it kind of presents a slightly tricky situation so because we might not know till January whether or not we actually get anything, but um, are yeah. you ready to go? Absolutely. Okay. So, and, and Locke's exactly correct. That we are kind of putting the cart before the horse in this case because we don't know what the federal government is going to grant us, if anything. 
so what I can talk to you all today is why I think we need to um, request federal funding to support a full-time domestic violence prosecutor and also tell you what I requested. Uh, now what I requested would be the best case scenario. If they say yes, 100%, uh, here's what we're going to offer. Um, so I'm more than happy to talk to you about that, but just keep in mind that they can say yes, 100%, no, you don't get anything or anywhere in between. Um, so I do actually have the application that I sent in and it does have the exact statistics on what I requested if you all would like a, to see that copy right now. So, and I, I think if you all would like, we'll just talk about the numbers first. Thing. So um, what uh, we requested is for the federal government to support uh, a full-time domestic violence prosecutor. And why I say support is important because with any anytime you apply for federal grant money, there's always the catch. And the catch is you cannot use federal funds to uh, supplement uh, or supplant, sorry, you can't use them to supplant current local funds. So what that means is I've applied for my salary uh, to be funded in part by the federal government, but that would require us to bring on an additional prosecutor. So just talking statistics and money first, uh, if you go to the, the last tab, the first tab covers um, the salary range, and that this contract would be for two years. But the last tab is the total cost of the project. And so the total amount that the local match, which would be Cole County, would be 24 to 25% and that would be uh, a little over 37,000. That would mean from the federal government for total benefits, that's salary, that's health insurance, that's um, helping pay towards the retirement plan um, would be over $100,000. Again, with the understanding that we would have to bring on an additional prosecuting attorney uh, to take over the other um, duties uh, such as burglary cases, the controlled substance cases, the uh, conflict cases that I cover in Boone and uh, other counties. And that could be more of an entry level mm -hmm. position um, from what uh, Miranda and I have discussed. So, uh, and I know I've, I've kind of made mention before about eventually needing uh, another APA one way or the other just because the caseload uh, continues to increase. So I, I think this would be an excellent opportunity to get that done. Uh, again, obviously contingent on what the federal government uh, chooses to do here for us, but uh, best case scenario, I think it could be a great opportunity to basically get a two for one type of deal. So, so they, could, they could give us all, they could give us just a portion. Or they could tell us no. no. It, yeah. Exactly, okay. exactly. Okay. And that, that's why I'm saying it's kind of the cart before the horse, because okay. I, I can't tell you today, uh, what they will say. Um, but I will tell you, as soon as I find out, I will let you all know. Um, they send us a contract where they lay everything out. Uh, so you all should have that as soon as I do. Um, and then obviously I'll be back on the agenda to talk about it. Um, that way you all will know the contract as soon as I do. We still have the 25% match. And then you're saying we would have to replace, replace you, but not necessarily replace you. We can break entry level. Correct. So essentially, Correct. It's but, like a zero dollar difference. It's going to be that would be that would be the twenty five percent. No, the twenty five percent could be offset by having an entry level instead of a this is her first year here too, so well but she came in as an APA too. Oh she did. Yes, so so Miranda's more a bit to a little, little bit of difference. Our, yes. So by bringing in an entry level there would be some offset there, yeah. But we'd also have another attorney for that little bit of difference. That's that's correct. I mean that that's so, the hope, right? That's the hope of I'm kinda of thinking out loud to make sure I was following all this. Absolutely, so absolutely. It, yeah. So most likely still gonna cost us something. It it, it will still but cost something. Not as much as the additional but staff just, would correct. If we would, get another it would, it would cost less than to just bring in a new APA. Yeah. Right. And that that total number, that last tab there, that's that includes the salary as well as the other benefits. Um, so yeah, if the 75% you could um, cover an employee with everything, um, then yes, you're you're correct. Kind of a I'll get one if you will. Um, but why I think um, I, I think it's really important that you have one prosecutor dedicated to domestic violence. And I could talk all day to you about 
prosecuting domestic violence. It's my passion. Um, but domestic violence cases are unlike any other case because uh, it's not a one-time deal. It's not a, a fight at the bar because of alcohol. It's combating um, learned behaviors by an abuser against his victim. You know, these individuals have relationships. They have history. Um, no relationship ever started with a punch or a hit. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a day two. Um, and so it's that combating um, this long relationship using coercive tactics that require so much attention. Domestic violence cases are very labor intensive, especially for the prosecutor. It's extremely important to build that relationship with the victim in order to surround her with community resources, um, such as RACs, and ensure that we can empower and embolden her um, to get away from her abuser. So in the prior administrations, um, they did not have one prosecutor dedicated to domestic violence. They had around six or seven. Um, they also had a culture of putting responsibility on the victim to participate. They had what was called a one-drop policy. And that means if a victim came in and she wanted to drop a case against an abuser, they would say, okay, this is the one-time policy and we'll do it. The issue when you have so many prosecutors covering domestic violence is in practice it sounds like a good policy, one time, off you go, but in reality, it means that multiple cases were being dropped over and over and over again. And the issue is that emboldens your offender to continue to reoffend. And it doesn't keep our community safe and it certainly doesn't keep our victims safe. So through this grant, it's to fund a full-time prosecutor dedicated to bringing justice to our community as well as our victims. And that means uh, adhering to what's called a no-drop policy. And again, in addition to the inherent nature of domestic violence, sticking to a no-drop policy also requires more work. It means when a victim comes in and she doesn't want to cooperate, I, I just lost my star witness. Now I have to examine that case using evidence-based practices. That means um, take away my victim, can I prove this case? Can I prove this case using what my officers do in the field? Can I use this case um, based on eyewitnesses, based on hearsay exceptions? Um, so it adds in additional work that has to be conducted by the domestic violence prosecutor. And that work also requires, it starts from day one. It starts from when those officers walk into that scene. And so in addition to um, working the case and prosecuting the case, this grant will also allow us to train officers. And um, part of the collaboration for this grant was with the Cole County Sheriff's Department. They wrote a letter in support, in support of us seeking this grant, in addition to supporting us help train local law enforcement officers so we can use those evidence-based tactics from day one all the way to prosecution. Um, and I, I will tell you for this grant, I spent hours, evenings, days going through statistics. And that for me is really where um, the statistics kind of show the need. So in the year of 2017 and 2018, the office helped uh, over 800 victims of domestic assault. Um, on average, your caseload is around 400. Right now, mine is 344. Um, that's a lot. That's a lot in, in conjunction with how much work and how much time and attention these victims need. Because um, this abuser has maybe isolated her financially, has maybe isolated her from her friends, from her family, from her support group. Um, you know, now the person who's bringing in the money to help feed her kids is in jail. Uh, and she has motivations that we need to help her address. Motivations of, I've got to feed my kids, I've got to keep shelter over their head, what do I do? Having a domestic violence prosecutor dedicated to combating these crimes and helping those victims improves her ability to get connections with resources like RACS. Also in addition to the Cole County Sheriff's Department, RACS also supported us in applying for this grant. Um, and I will tell you, looking towards the future, one of my hopes with this grant is establishing a community response team to combat domestic violence. Um, so that's a little bit about why I think we need this grant, assuming the federal government um, provides Thank us. Fingers okay. You want these back? Uh, sure. Yeah. I actually will take one. Let's. Uh, right, Thanks. Yeah, you know, I appreciate Locke that you're looking for oh, yeah. new um, sources of. Miranda, we need one for the minutes Income well. and things like that. Sure. We Just were a little bit there. stagnant for. Yeah, uh, and, so and, this and is. I think a lot of it yeah. is just, uh, 
you know, in some ways, not saying that anything was ever done intentionally or, or what, but maybe just getting, you know, some fresh eyes in there and, and looking at it in a new way and, and finding, you know, ways that other counties have been using to generate a little more revenue in the office, we've luckily been able to bring that in. So uh, hopefully um, we'll hear back from the federal yeah. government soon, and I guess otherwise we can, I know that was a lot of information, so if you guys want to digest that, we can tackle it again next week and just kind of uh, see what questions, concerns you guys might have on it. That would be. Tuesday is when you guys want to do that. Well, we've already got yeah, we've already got the VOCA grant set for discussion next week, okay. so I figured we could just kind of tack this onto that if, if you guys want or if you so have add a close closed session yeah. personality. Add a close. And then just yeah. close for, yeah. So okay. just to give everybody kind of a heads up is if we don't have um, the information prior to when you approve the budget, um, most of the time that process will follow a court order process to get that grant put into um, the budget. So. Okay. okay. All right. Thank okay. you all very much. Yeah, thank you all. Keep yeah, looking for money for that uh, that high high performance no. emergency. V8. Yeah. Thanks, Miranda. Hey, thank Thanks, Locke. Yes. Have a good day. You too. Joe, you ready? Sure. Joe's budget is on page fifty-seven. <laughs> You didn't have any changes, right, Joe? Not right. Oh. <laughs> Not really. Okay. I do have a request that there is some other office space available. We're running out. We could use bigger quarters. Is that, is that here downtown or is that where? works better if we stay downtown because of my utilization of the, this building and the shares. I think one way or another by 2021 we will have <laughs> had to do something. So. Um, other than that, the budget's fine. The only one that I got if you my travel I've been trying to get my people closer to me but their behavior is not suitable for some of the ones closer so they're spreading out again so that could change but I still think I can work within the budget that I have so Joe um, you've had a open full-time position most of the year um, I did not change your full-time positions. I've left that one full-time position in there, and I left your part-time at the same as well. I know that your budget numbers looked a little different than mine. Did you have something else in mind that you were thinking to do there? For the current staff that I have, mm -hmm. yeah. That I mentioned probably late summer about bumping the salary of uh, one of my staff senior deputy position and then uh, I've got two people that, Who's that are reluctant to work part-time at the salary so I'm still dealing with that if not then I would probably go back and this would probably all be taken care of You guys have questions for Joe? So you're wanting to bring a couple people on at a higher salary for part time? Yes. Do you have an hourly rate you were thinking? I had mentioned earlier last late last summer, like twenty five dollars an hour, but I don't think that's realistic across the About a like a thousand hour employee, or mm -hmm. and you would have.
have more than one or just one? Full time or part time? Part time. Um, right now it's probably going to be one. So would you fill the position that you have open or? The full time? Yeah. I will try to fill it, but I was thinking that that money could be utilized to compensate if I got a deputy salary up to what I'm thinking. The person that is no longer here, she was making 39000 I don't have that information. I can't, yeah. I can't get to it at the moment. So if you can kind of get us that, I mean, so currently you don't have a deputy? I have a person that's, I think the classification is uh, assistant. No, it changed last year, so. She is a deputy, uh, 32. Right, so he has a deputy two at 32 five, 20, and then he has two, two administrative assistant positions. Yeah, we talked about it, about chief deputy basically said last year you didn't need a chief deputy you got your other deputies right if i remember correctly so we didn't even have chief deputy in i didn't even have a deputy budget, so but now you think you need a chief deputy yes So he has an admin assistant open? Yes. Okay. Yeah, if you could just get us something in writing on what you would sure. like to propose, you know, your chief deputy at, and, you know, if you wanted to, if you're not going to fill your admin assistant and you're going to use a couple part time people, you know, we can take a look at that too. So, Joe, if you can try to have that back here by like Monday or Tuesday, because we're going to talk about salaries next week. Like I said, the only thing that I got question on is travel. I don't, I don't claim <coughs> when I'm in Cole County, I do that on my own. I just charge one of the So there's 4,000 for mileage and 1,000 for meetings, travels, and dues. Did you have an idea of what you were thinking you wanted that to be? On um, my travel. Um, I, to give you a guess, I'd have to know where they're going to be placed. I mean, there's a difference if they're in Columbia versus Trenton or Chillicothe, Maryville, Springfield. I have one in the Boot Hill now. So. so right now, Joe, I think the projections only that you're going to be right at about three thousand, and there's four thousand dollars in there. But if you think you need more than that, you're going to have to give me some idea of what that is. I will. Okay. Well, there was a quarter. I did turn it in. Okay. Any other questions? No. All right. Thanks, oh. guys. Thanks, Thank Joe. You. Okay. Do you guys want to flip to page 65 and look at Julie Cole's budget? Because she said she was not coming, but if we have questions, we could call and ask. No. Yeah, her budget was pretty much the same as last year's, and I didn't really make any changes to it. Slight changes, maybe. Yep, slight. So, I don't have any questions on it. Mm -hmm. um, one thing to notice there is their jury script money. So in the past, they were getting reimbursed for um, any, I think it's any of the trials that actually go to a jury for that time. Um, we haven't gotten anything the last two years really so I've taken that revenue out of the budget instead of planning on it okay. um, another one we should have looked at while Joe was here is the revenue yeah his I revenue just, yeah. Oh, I didn't bring it up if you go back to page 57 I think try to catch yeah him. try to catch him because that one's pretty significant Okay. 
so when Marilyn was here, we were reaching revenues of $90,000, $100,000 a year in fees for his people. Um, the first year Joe was here, it kind of dropped off some, which we kind of expected because Marilyn did a lot of cleanup of cases right before she left. Um, so it was only like 66000 This year, so far, we've only collected thirty-three. Sorry, Joe. We we forgot to talk about your revenue. The fees. Yes. That's dependent on if there's money. I can't collect the fee if there's nothing. Else. Right. It just seems like it's dropped off significantly over the last two years. Yeah, and most of my people don't have money. They should be picking up again because I've had several people that had real estate that we acquired and sold. Steady for the last four or five years. Now it's really dropped off. Was it running about 75, 80? We were now running about 35, 40. Yeah, right now you're at 33, 871. And we filed a whole bunch of settlements. Okay. Uh, Questions? Uh, just something we we'll want to keep an eye on. See what we're doing different. Are you doing something wrong? Or? Something slipping through the cracks. Okay. It's a significant change. It's a significant change. Yeah, we need to keep an eye on it and see. I'm, I mean, I'm sure that Maryland's people didn't have money either, but somehow we got some kind of reimbursement. So I've, I've brought it up and it has picked up here in the last probably 60 days because yeah. my projection was only 20,000. Yeah, we were only at 16 when this book was printed. Yeah, so um, we may be able to adjust that up a little bit because I dropped it down to 25,000. Yeah. But I'm a little concerned because that's a significant change in that revenue. And you know how revenue goes. <laughs> But I don't think we can continue to budget it at eighty five either no, because we're no. not we're not seeing Just, anywhere yeah. close to that. I would not do that. Yeah. Do we have a list of like not names per se, but how many personnel that we are taking care of? Yes. She does. So we what do. are our numbers compared to when Marilyn had it? Mm, it's very similar as far as number of clients. Okay. I thought maybe the numbers went down for some reason or another and no. And I agree. He do. He does have multiple clients that don't don't have any fees to take. So we kind of left it open today. We can talk about other people's budgets. We can, right? Isn't that on there? I think we did add budget discussion. So if you guys want to, is there anything from today we want to go back and? talk about most of what we talked about again today was salary stuff so um, we made a few changes to EMS but I made those while he was here um, he had two so he had two other changes the medical supplies and the public relations that he brought up I don't think medical supplies will ever go down so it's I guess really in any changes to his budget at this point are going to have to reduce the contingency or increase the transfer in to balance his budget back up. Who are we talking about? EMS. EMS. I hope I don't have a heart attack or something because he's not going to come save me, but I'm not really for adding another person. I know who really wants a logistics, but we've got some people over there that can, for now, take care of keeping track of medicines. And they're just going to have to learn to do that. Supervisors do have to step it up. But and then raising the other one, kind of bring that chart back up.
consider that chief of training if that's indeed going to be a number three person. So I do currently have the logistics person in there, but I don't have any other salary adjustments. Like I said, I put the 3% for the admin staff. I, again, would rather take care of the people we have there than to add that position if we're going to do that. That's just where I'm at right now. That may change tomorrow, you know me. And I guess the public relations, I haven't gotten a good list from him of what we're going to spend that on. I know he has lots of ideas of classes he wants to do, but is that going to be printing pamphlets and training education materials? Is that buying equipment to teach the classes? What, what goes into that public relations line? So any thoughts on those two? Like I said, we can leave salaries till later if you want. I think we pro I, I think really we do need a logistics officer. I think, you know, David, when, when he was logistics officer, he did, he did an awesome job. And uh, uh, well, I think he did an awesome job. I was I think it can be something that can be spread out among all of them to take care of and to keep an eye on. And it's probably not bad to have more than one person working on it and knowing what's going on because if you have just one person and they leave, then <coughs> nobody really knows what's going on and you're starting at ground one again. So, so like I said, I, I just soon don't necessarily add that one at this point. I don't know if you've got people who will step forward to do it. Well, I mean, not, they don't have to step forward. We can push them. You know, that's part of the job. What was the other thing? There was two. Med and medical supplies 15,000 more and then a public relations line that was 8,000 and then of course some salary other salary issues but like I said we can leave those till later if you want so we're gonna look at all new positions and all salary adjustments all at one time I think so can, can you put that on yeah, it's kind of so think that's what we were going to do. Yes. How many so, anybody that wants a significant what? adjustment more than the 3% COLA. Yeah, so I have a list that I can type out here. I've been going right. through and double checking to... the ones they came in and asked for again. Right. I just wanted to clarify that any, anything more than a 3% COLA adjustment or merit or whatever you want to call it, and then any new positions. So, I didn't get to ask him when he was here. Thanks. Have we had Thanks. Where's that bus? You want me to take a step? In 19 compared to 18. Or oh. EMS? Yeah. I don't know, but it's significant. We had three more. He was telling me it was around 10,000. 8,000 go through or transferred through Jeff Central. Those are emergency calls, about 8,000. 2,000 are direct calls that are that are um, just not emergency transfers. Okay. Well, this is where the med supplies come in, as if I understand if we have increased calls, increased volume of people we're taking care of and med supplies that we're using, then it, that is what it is. Well, I'm not sure that it's increased in volume. I mean, it could be increased in costs, you know, raising their prices cost adjustments. 
he said call volume, so that's what I was going yeah. off of. Um, that could be too. I don't. They come out with new prescriptions and new prescri you know, new medicines are always going to be more expensive. should be building them the extra that it costs, right? Medical. We give you a shot of something and it costs you, us more. You would it think it would work like that, but I'm not yeah, sure I don't, it does. I, I think the base call is, I don't think you can bill for everything that you use. <laughs> yeah, he was talking about that one time too, that is a mess, but it should, it should cover should cover your cost, but yeah. I always do so. And I thought he just went through a bunch of the supplies, and that's one of his arguments for being a logistics officer is that it was a mess, and so they cleared out a bunch of stuff and we had to replace it. So if everything's back up to par. So I don't I don't know if we leave it at 180 and keep an eye on it and see what happens, or do we up it now and then it's covered. I'd up it, and if you don't use it, then it's we. Okay, so we got to take it away from somewhere. Though. Same with the the PR stuff. If, if one dude PR, we're gonna find his name somewhere. Either take it from education, or you give it as seven thousand for a paramedic scholarship. I still like that well, idea. Yeah, if you want to do the scholarship, we can put it in there. You just got to take it away from somebody. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. So. I think I have to have Jill research that. I don't know if that's that. Well, yeah, we were talking about that with the other, you know, where we, we get them licensed and get all this, and then they, they immediately leave. So that needs to be a countywide policy that if we pay for their training that they need to stay with us for three years or reimburse us for the training. I do want to talk about the county commission's budget, but if the sheriff's got something first, we can wait, but I don't want you guys to leave. So what are we doing with the medical supplies and PR? I was just trying to get that answered. Yep. I thought those were low-hanging fruits, but... They are, and you can finish them. We well, low-hanging fruit, but I've been talking for 10 well, minutes. Well, we can, we can leave, take... The, the PR and just just talk to Matt more and maybe maybe not put it in for right now. I think medical supplies. I <laughs> nothing gets cheaper. So. But the PR is, you know, that's not something that we necessarily have to. Have. Drugs is something we do have to have. It's kind of like giving, giving him bullets, you know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you don't want them to have to have their, their one bullet in their uh, shirt pocket. That's, that's fine. That but if, <laughs> if we're going to increase it 15,000, then it's got to come from somewhere. So where do we want to take it from? I don't know, we throw that back in his lap so you can have we can increase that, but it's got to come from somewhere, or do we? We can ask him, yeah. Do we leave He's, it at 180, and if it comes to it at the end of the year and we have to take it from contingency, we do it then. I mean, we got control of it, so. So, what I mean, so as, you, as you're trying to digest this stuff, I'm just trying to understand your thought process here. So, obviously, Kristen created a proposed budget. Um, so are you saying that her proposed budget is what you're going off of or are you going off actual expenditures or what are you looking at to say this is a number that, that each department has? Both, all three. Um, I'll look at where we're at for this year, where we were at maybe in 18 and why they're wanting to request more. If it's actual usage, that is what it is. And um, we can pull that from contingency now the PR thing see that so, is something that you have to have here so let's walk through that so 
Last year total activity 181,827. Year to date right now 17812. But he just did a transfer, so I'm assuming he has additional bills out there to pay. But he has $10,000 to spend between now and the end of the year to get him to the 180. Projected back in September was 182,667. And the additional 15 would take him to 195. That one's not a heartbreak either way. I'm not going to fight down if we go up to the 195 if we need to. If we truly feel that those are going to increase in either cost or volume or both, then just go 195 and we take that out of contingency then. Reduce to contingency, right? So we, d we did start the year at 195. He's transferred some of that out to go other places. Originals up on the screen. 195, 110 was original. So we brought it down for some reason. He's transferred out to other places. Okay. Well, I mean, if we're going to have to do a transfer later on, we might as well put it in there now. So, I mean, you can, so you can inflate any line item within that budget that you want, you know, thinking, oh, well, this is here. we may need this, or, I mean, we've heard that from almost everybody that comes in here. I'm, I'm not sure that's going to be enough. Well, that's why contingency is built into to the budget. Um, so, leave it 180? Well, so, I mean, obviously, you try to get people to work within, you know, a budget that's reasonable. Um, obviously, he's got costs that are associated um, that we can look at. You know, his costs are going to be around 182 as projected for medical supplies. So, you know, here nor there. But you also so I also look back at revenues, and you know, our revenues are down, and supposedly they're supposed to be going way up. Well, that's not happening either, or at least it hasn't happened yet. But I know there was a lot of stuff that they had to go back, and hopefully this new billing company will be able to increase those revenues. Um, I hope. All right, which floater? Well, originally, he requested 180. We Gave him 180, so we can you can leave it at 180, and then if it does go over, we take it out of contingency. Good by me. Okay, and then public relations. Uh, with schools and um, you know different events where you go out and you go out and engage the public in different things um, like the probably the naloxane thing where you're you know, talking to people about how to administer an overdose drug if you know they got a child or somebody that's had issues with drug abuse or or you're just talking about stop the bleed in the schools for active shooter training and different things or maybe Maybe that's so not, hiring people to do that or supplies they I, need I don't, for them? I don't know. I mean, $8,000, I don't think you're going to hire somebody to do that, I think. Well, I mean, to well, train and I mean, if, right. if you have the equipment to teach the class, right. we're paying for the salary out of salary line. Right. What right. are you, 
Like, is it I, supplies I or no, You're what? asking the wrong person. Yeah. Uh, we can revisit that with Matt next week when we're. Yeah. I think it's going to be specialized supplies to go out. I mean, it, it's actually a good idea to be able to have some to to give away. stuff to give away to, to when you go to these outreach programs and stuff. So it's it's not a bad idea. And that's why I didn't know for sure I didn't want to speak for him on it. So I mean, I'm. How much do you spend on like dare and is it three? Yeah, but it, I mean, we, we we do it differently because sometimes I'll end up buying out a civil to make this right, and, and there's sometimes it will end up uh, spending some other monies that we have. So, uh, but it's a it's a great idea to be able to come up with, you know, uh, like a firefighter's stickers. stop, drop, and roll, and, and stickers. stickers and, you know, yeah. But if it's you know it brings yeah. a good rapport to the public, I yeah, mean, it's not a, it's not a bad thing at all. We can talk to him about it yeah. next week, see what he's got in mind on it. Yeah. Okay, what next? Debbie uh, wants to do. John. Yeah. Plus John's got Little John. I just have a couple things I was going to bring up uh, since I, when we left here with um, it off, Richard Lee. I went back. And so, what's that? Nothing. Go ahead. Uh, so, you turned me off? Or, uh, no. Okay. <laughs> so, talking to Debbie. Is there a switch? <laughs> there is a switch. Uh, <laughs> Call the baseball bat, but anyway, <laughs> so uh, I went back and I think I'm going to change my budget uh, just on the capital improvements and add a thirty thousand dollar line item uh, because he is nowhere close to being able to go live yet with this because he's still got to talk to Oscar and stuff. But at least if I have it in my line item because it's a one time payment thing, I'm good with that. We can put it in my in my capital improvements. If he doesn't, if it doesn't work out, then it just sits in my capital improvements and we don't have to worry about it. But that way, if it does, uh, if something does happen with Oscar and they uh, get a soul, then they might be able to be able to get us uh, to let them hook into their uh, their system, and then we can move forward with it. So, um, doing that, it's gonna because I was gonna use my biometric money, but and I talked to you guys about this once before about my jail ban. I need to replace my jail ban, uh, so I'm gonna use the biometric money for that. Um, and, and, uh, we talked, we talked about this like three months, four months ago or something. Um, and it's about, I mean, it's 50,000. It's all coming out of my biometrics. It's, it's in my budget and it's all state contracts. So uh, I'd like to move forward with that too. We talked about it and then we got into it when we were down there having a staff meeting. We got into a, um, a slight argument on uh, if we actually said how much money it was going to be. And I'm almost positive we said it was going to be around 50,000 for the insert. And this is a new van. Uh, the insert in a new van. So I just thought I would come up and tell you uh, if it's okay, I'd like to press forward this month and encumber that money out of my biometrics money and, and uh, go ahead and get those to the, the van. Again, it's coming out of my budget right now, so it's not like I'm uh, having to go back to you for money. What the? It's going to replace a van that's got 250,000 miles on it, over 250,000. It's, it's gave its life for guys to Still running? We don't take it on long trips anymore. But uh, should we give that to Greg too? Uh, we oh, keep, if we just, we just keep. We would be able to sell it. Uh, we get some money for it, but I don't know how much. Uh, it would be very much. It wouldn't get for it. So so engine problems, transmission. We've problems. had engine problems with it before. It's been fixed. It's still running. But like I said, we, we what we don't need is we don't need a van with six prisoners in it right. broke down in Cape Cod. So. so Greg's most of Greg's stuff is here in town. So. So it's, it's in good shape, though. I don't know. Uh, it's not in bad shape. I mean, it's it's, it, I mean, it's showing its age. I it see it. More I see it. It's, I see it. It's coming it's, and going. It's wore pretty good. It, it rattles more than it rolls, I think. But what year is it? Uh, I I couldn't tell you that. Chris. You can tell us. Go ahead. Are you scared? Older than two thousand? Uh, no, no, it's not. It's in good shape, though. <laughs> yeah. What you guys are talking about? Well, as far as rattles, is that if? You know, Greg wants something to haul equipment and stuff in it. It, I, it doesn't really. <laughs> I, I don't know if he would want this van. Okay. I, I, I would not recommend it. I, I would, okay. uh, for the simple reason to do that, you're going to have to pay someone to take take, take everything out. out. Uh, yeah. Wheeler used it for his car, then. Well, he got his from yeah. from uh, Richards. Yeah, I got Richards old he got yeah. I just spent eight hundred bucks for shocks on it yesterday. <laughs> but. Anyway, uh, if it's okay with you, we're going to press forward with that van uh, and go ahead and get it on order. It's going to be it'll be a month or two months before we get it in. But um, 
kind of van is it? And new or? Chevy, yeah, a new, it's on state contract, a new Chevy uh, cargo van with the test at the rear air in it. And so you got money in biometrics that yes. you're going to buy that with? Yes. So. I have 98000 in there right now. And so what, what's it going to cost to outfit it? Uh, it's well right now the vehicle is like 21. This isn't going to be a good number because it's not an extended cab, but the, the state number is 21, uh, about 21,000. If you add all the because uh, we're going to get the bigger engine, uh, it's going to roughly right now it's 40,800 is what it's the, the insert off state contract and then the van itself. But then we're still going to have to pay for it to get outfit or to get uh, installed. Uh, and that's not going to be cheap because it's twenty five hundred dollars for a car. So you're probably for this van that you're talking probably four thousand or five. Um, and then we got to get a video system in it. So it's going to be another probably another fifteen hundred two thousand dollars for that. So the van's forty. The van is twenty one. With the insert, it's forty. With the insert, I'm sorry. With the insert, it's forty four five. The insert is what? It's like a cage. cage. Mm -hmm. It's a wow. pill. The damn cage is more than the damn van. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're not cheap. Fifteen five is how much it is. It's more than that. No. You said the total cost was forty four five, and the van was twenty one. So well, that's it's twenty one before you add the the extras. So it comes no. with okay. no no rear air and you know stuff like that. We want the bigger engine. Um, okay. That kind of stuff. You just have one van? No, this will be our second one. We have two vans and a car. What do you guys think? Good? Oh, I'm fine. I'm good. I, I, I see them coming and going. Yeah, I mean, I'll, it, it's... I'll work it's, on this. Uh, I'm hoping to be able to, to hopefully encumber the money tomorrow. So uh, I've already got the bid for the insert. I just got to call the company because it's... The bid isn't isn't where I want it because it's a it's a normal express van and it needs to be an extended, so it's going to be a little bit more than twenty one base price, but it's not going to go over fifty thousand. So there's no value on the old insert. Uh, no, no, it costs us more to take it out, repair it, and put it back in, okay. and it would be it would be worth it. Okay. And the last guys that well, the last guys that installed it almost spit on your shoe. I guess it's a real pain to put together. So. Okay. All right, that's it for me. But like I said, you'll see our capital improvements going to change. We're going to put that thirty thousand on our capital improvements for that program. Yes. All right. You're okay. Yeah. Thank you. I don't care what they say about it. But I won't go there. It's on. It's on tape. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see y'all later. Mute. 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 Hey, can we look at this emergency services sales tax real quick? Mm -hmm. um, so I was just trying to follow the numbers just on the sales tax side um, but obviously you had the 690 in there for uh, ambulances and you had the 179 in there for capital improvements and so as I look at the sheet are you you have to add that capital lease line so the capital lease is his striker cop payment capital lease word oh okay so, so that's those two together is his capital lease. Okay. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. So that's part of the striker. A big portion of that is the striker payment. Right. Or almost all of it. Well, is there, so the is there something else in there? I mean, is there another four thousand in the capital lease that makes the one twenty two six versus the one eighteen or it's one twenty two six, that's his payment. I don't know what the one eighteen I just see the 118.5 over on the capital side. Yeah, that was his. But I think that may have been payment. his number in his request, but the actual payment's 122.6. Okay. So maybe we can change that on the other side, too, <laughs> on his capital request. Oh, yeah. And one other change in there, and... Um, I went ahead and made it because we have to, but um, we did not have advance notice of the St. Mary's TIF and got that bill this year. Um, and I did not include that TIF in the sales taxes. So in that tax increment financing line is where we pay that TIF money back. Um, so I had 
drop that because the three tiffs we had were running under our expectation, but I had to bump it back up to the 15 to cover that St. Mary's tiff. And, and we that's, are kind of in limbo as to what uh, that's going to Yeah, be so that, that tiff's going to continue to grow as they add additional businesses on that property. It's, it's going to continue to grow because right now the only uh, business that's on there that was reporting sales tax this year was the coffee place. Okay. Um, but once the Burger King opens, that will add to it. And since their original tax base was zero, they get half of all of the sales tax that they collect back. Half of all the sales tax? Mm -hmm. Or just the local sales tax? Well, our portion. So, our yes, half of our half. portion. I mean, they still got to pay the state there. Right. I don't think the state, yeah. But like the city's portion, they get right. half of it from the city back. They get half of the county's portion of the sales tax back. So that TIF encompassed across the expressway into the yeah. Starbucks and Burger King and what else? The hotel. The hotel on the other side. Hotel. So when it opens. And they're looking at some outlots, retail. And outlots on that side of Missouri Boulevard that they'll develop then as well, I assume. I assume. Yeah, I we didn't seen. get in on so right now our guess like right now we broke down the first one and it was about what 23 2000 for sales tax but that was again just for the starbucks so um, we're taking a guess that maybe six next year but that could be way less than what it actually turns out to be were they just having a public comment on that no, that was, let's see. I don't think they ever the gathered the committee sense. together to, to discuss that. But, I mean, oh, I think we did that way. I think that's it been was quite a, a while ago. quite a while ago. And see, the thing was, at the time, St. Mary's was not for profit. They weren't paying any tax. So, so uh, their tax base was zero. Yeah, their tax base was zero. Um, so we, we are getting some tax it's a real estate part of that. pardon the real estate part of that right versus well what it was well i guess they were paying real estate too yeah, yeah. same areas. right but this is just a sales tax. They, they were paying tax yeah after after they built a new hospital then i think they had to pay they had to pay tax on the old hospital i think so the but, tip is just on 50 percent of the sales tax they still have to pay real and personal well, they get a portion of it too. So there's seats and eats or whatever it is. So there's a sales tax portion of a TIF and then there's also a property tax portion of the TIF. Property tax portion will run through Larry and it will come off the top before it comes to us. On the sales tax side, we get all the sales tax and then once a year they calculate what that portion is and we have to pay it back to the developer. How long did that go? Uh, yeah, I don't have paperwork in front of me. I don't have paperwork in front of me. That's fine. I was just curious if you knew right off. I don't know off the top of my head. That's been a while. But we still are collecting some tax where before we weren't collecting any tax on it. Right. It's just hard to see. I know. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. It's hard to see that yeah. increase when it comes as our regular distribution. Yeah. You can't say, yeah. oh, well, this is the amount of tax that's coming from here we weren't getting before. Right. And some businesses close. So, right. You know, that could change the overall. And since sales tax has been pretty flat, we're anticipating flat. So, I wonder what they do on that lodging tax. City's lodging tax. I don't know. I mean, so, when you build the hotel. So that's one other change I made while we were in here because I'm going to have to go through all the sales taxes and change that back. And like I said, the 15000 is just an estimate of what those four tips will cost us. And if you guys can just turn to 37, there's not much on that budget. So 
fifteen thousand is a total amount overall. That's all four tips. So we okay. have O'Donohue's Southside. Right, it's all three sales taxes too, right? Right. Yes. So it gets divided yes across all three. And I can. What page? I'm sorry. What page are we going? I'm thirty-seven. Again, you don't see much there. I mean, we don't obviously bring in any revenue, but there are some expenses there. And you were talking about the other day how much was in our meetings and travel. All three of you and anybody else that we decide to go on any kind of training, there's 2,000 in there. We also have another 2,000 and 127 I use for when you guys go to meetings that affect more than just your commission job. Okay, so we talked about that. There's just a couple things I wanted to bring up as far as, um, you know, as you know, it, since the budget's put out, I may have somebody gone for three months this next year. I may be coming to you asking for a part-time person. That is not in the budget currently. It's, um, it's become increasingly more activity within our department when we have six to eight turnovers every two weeks. It's a lot of employees that come and go it's a lot of websites that we have to maintain. And we, uh, we added another website this year, which is Cert Deferred Comp. Now we have to go on to their website and add people in there, take people off, and I have to upload the direct deposits to them, or sheet to them, or report to them. We also are gonna add in 2020 election workers that are gonna flow through the payroll system. Yes, we flowed them through the accounts payable before, but putting them into the payroll system is going to take manpower to get all that in and then to pay them, what do you say, five elections next year in the middle of all our payrolls that come every two weeks. So I just want you to know I'm definitely going to probably ask you for part-time. It's going to be the summer months, May through July. Also want to put a word in for our employees. We seem to be an example here, and we seem to be forgotten some because we are trying to set an example for other departments. So I'd like you to keep that in mind. The girls work very hard. They make you guys look good, make the county look good, and they are dedicated to this place. So I don't want them to get lost, and I want to speak for them that, you know, you guys consider whatever we're going to do with salaries next week. I know we're all county employees, and I know we have different facets of different jobs that we do. Some things, you know, the sheriff, EMS, health, but we can't forget about uh, the other people that make things run. And without, without them, everything wouldn't run, you know, so. And, and we are, I'm working more with the HR consultant people. Um, we're kind of behind the scenes. I really appreciate that. I appreciate being able to call somebody, text somebody, when I, people bring questions to me. It's, I don't, you guys don't see it, and I'm probably not um, keeping you abreast of all of that, but I am using them. We haven't, you know, we had to pay a deposit on that, so I haven't received any invoice. But it's very short questions, I'm not sure how she's gonna bill. But I see that taking a lot more time, and, but it, it is a help to have that, so. And, and where we go with that. How much are you thinking for part-time? I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking, you know, seventeen to eighteen dollars an hour and so I stay about four four or five thousand. Okay. And the HR people have been pretty responsive. They have. Now I mean they're not instant. Right. But, you know, with by the next day I have usually an answer from somebody. And they're very good to work with. We've I've only had one meeting on the manual and it's coming to you soon. <laughs> so but um, after the budget, yeah. She <laughs> said, we'll get this done at the end of the year. I said, well, you're not going to get this done by the end of the year. No. So. So you made one comment about uh, meetings, travels, and dues. And so uh -huh. some of that, you said some of our travel and stuff comes out of the commission portion, and some comes out of 127. Yes. Um, so if you're paying for your annual training okay. that you're required to go to as a commissioner, or you're going to a meeting that you're on a board as the commissioner, right. then it comes out of the commission's budget. Okay. If you're going to something where you're representing the county and not something required of your job, it gets paid out of 127. And again, 
So there's 2,000 there. This would be an example of that. So like you could say the MAC meeting. Yes. You know, you're going to represent Cole County. You're not necessarily okay. going. As your training. As your training. Okay. I'm just curious. And then if Jill goes to continuing ed or something like that, I take out a 122 or 120. I actually take out a 127. Yeah. Barely. It's about nap time. <laughs> Or lunchtime. Do you want to look at 127 while we're talking about it? Page 46 is where it starts. That's revenue. Next two pages is our next page is expense. expense here um, on page 46 I'm um, sorry 47 and then I do build the departments I can build for vehicles and for liability and stuff too so but it's a big dollar amount in our budget here so financial institution tax of 5,000 that's money we receive from it's statutorily I don't know yeah, so we get a distribution in January and December of every year. January is always the interest earned on it, and um, December is, so it comes from the state. Um, I can't give you a good description of what it is. Most of it comes in and goes back out. So it's this a tax a that, portion. like, banks pay. Yeah. I've got the definition for it. Yeah. Um, stock insurance. So that's insurance company, the tax that, that they, business. yeah. In this county, and the state sends so us that any money. insurance company in this county that sells insurance or whatever pays into that. It's based on the premiums that are paid. I can get you a definition of that too. I was just curious. And it's a yeah. one-time payment. Yeah. So it comes once a year. And then the public defender rent is that something coming from the state for their? I build the two entities that we service three: uh, Cole County, Montel County, and Miller. Miller. So there's oh. It's not up there, but yeah, it's based on square footage of the building, of the building, and, and population, minimal amount. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Two hundred dollars in rent for the whole year. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's about five thousand for Miller, and it's about three thousand for Montel. And then uh, health insurance, forty-five thousand. That's retirees' health insurance, where they in pay. Account. Yeah, they pay that's back for their, for their yep. portion. So that's so the, that's administ just the administration fees on everybody. Yep. Yep. Other funds. Computer services and stuff. Okay. Co uh, no, computers. computer services goes into Brian's budget. So admin fees like the flat three percent. Yeah. yeah. Payroll, Jill, all that auditor. Yeah. All together. So here's a list, um, some smaller one-time fees that we pay. So like Jill has Westlaw fees, we pay a hosting fee for the website. Um, we pay uh, the collector for surtax payback, our agreement with um, that surtax issue, um, bar dues, um, our annual financial reporting that we do on the jail cops, that's the WM financial annual fee. If we have legal fees, that one's kind of a guess. It's kind of a cushion in case we need to hire out an attorney for something in particular. Okay. And then that more source contract.
just looking at this why the Mac and the Venmo RPC are down at materials and supplies or just because it's always been there. Yeah. Basically. That's, yeah. <laughs> Basically. Should be more of a contractual service. That one was prior to me. Yes. <laughs> that account was there prior to me. Approaching me several times about new machines and different stuff like that. So Posted machines? Yeah. That one isn't that old. Though. As far as I'm concerned. Questions? Any other budgets you want to look at? Um, or what, are we right at it? We're right at 12, so. I'm going to stop for today, take a break, come yep. back Monday. And Yep. <laughs> I'd Back here Monday. Yes. Back here Monday. Did so we change it to 8 or 8.30? We changed it all nine? to 8. 8 o'clock. 8. Monday, Wednesday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And we do keep adding stuff to Tuesdays. I don't know. Somebody had mentioned limited agenda, but we just added several more things this morning. So. Yeah, most of those are going to be pretty quick. Yeah, I thought we were stopping them. He even asked about putting some kind of bid award on there, and so I think we're trying to limit that agenda. So I mean, that's the only time you're meeting. If and anybody else asks, I'm going to tell them and make it wait till the 17th if they can. Yeah. So we can plow through this stuff, or we're going to be here all day. So what all did you put on there? Just a closed session that would block and. Oh well, that's budget anyway. Hopefully, they can, people that want to come talk about personnel, I mean, they need to have it all in writing so that we can look at it and make decisions because I don't need people to sit in here for 15 minutes and beat around a bush about different stuff. The so, length of their plea is directly well, related so, to after the <laughs> So, you did hear most of the salary right. requests in these budget things. Okay. I'm going to type you up a list by right. department of what those Thank are. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> sorry, Chris. Jeff wants a race, dude. Don't you quit doing that. Oh, sorry. Um, I think I'd be trained that when you walk I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. fine if they want to come back in and right. make, make their plea, but it needs to be, they need to be 60 words or less, and they need to get it out and spill their beans and, okay, fine, thank you, see you, you're gone. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so I... <laughs> I don't want to get into a whole nother day of sitting and listening because right. right. most of them had the opportunity to come in and plead their case during right. this part yes. of it. If you want to have discussions about each one and they want to be involved, I think that's fine. But a presentation again on what you're wanting, I think, is repetitive no. of what we've already been through. I, I definitely think if they want to be here that day and answer any additional questions or make any short comments yes but i don't want to sit through another lengthy discussion about each individual one i agree we're, we're going to talk about individual positions in closed session if, people or if you start about talking positions. about naming names i don't even know if that's closed I, I was going to say most their current salary salary is public information. Right. Unless you're talking about some sort of merit increase for their performance, I think that would be close. Yes. What about somebody that wants an additional pay for, you know, take Holly for instance for additional duties or whatever? I, I have no idea no, what that looks like. So I think that would be open. I mean, her current salary is public information. We don't have to have any names. You can just talk position anyway. 
because if the position is taking on additional responsibilities and duties, then that's the way I think it would be addressed. If you want to name names, that's fine. I mean, I think there are a few that are individuals that we will be talking about their position. Most of them are titles. And you have closed session, so either way, yeah. you can get it done next week, Tuesday. Want me to add it to Monday, too? I think Monday we probably should clean up. So we, we haven't talked about health insurance fund. We haven't talked about your sales tax a whole lot. Um, and I think just kind of flipping through and making sure any changes we have made we're still good with so we can look at bottom line. Okay. Because we only go till noon on Monday, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No, we're definitely going to have to Tuesday, make some decisions. Next week. <laughs> you want me to get my I'm back in here? I'm going to All in favor? Aye. 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 It may not. Here, Chris. It may not be till Monday morning. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So I'll record it. Okay, we'll be opening bids for 2019-33 tires and miscellaneous services. First one is from Warehouse Tire, Jefferson City. Next is from Ponce Tire Service Incorporated of Jefferson City. It appears to be complete. is from Goodyear Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company uh, this is from out of Boonville, Missouri
appears to be correct and filled out. Okay, these bids will be taken under advisement uh, and brought back forth before the commission at a later date.